Welcome to Going Through the Motions, where justice is served with a twist of drama and the dash of intrigue. In this high-stakes arena, where truth and lies collide, we follow the riveting cases, the impassioned arguments, and the relentless pursuit of justice. Join retired Special Agent Sean McDonough as he delves deep into the legal battleground, where every verdict has consequences, and every motion sets the stage for gripping tales of flaw and order. This is Going Through the Motions with Sean McDonough. Tail light was smashed. I know it was smashed. You also know that those pieces were planted. I do also. Somebody's going to jail. We can't hear you, Sean. Of course I didn't have my mic on. Beautiful. All right. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. I'm really excited to be back here. Please tell me you could hear this intro. Please tell me. Anyways. We heard, no we heard the intro, just not you talking. Okay. Beautiful. All right. So here we go. Um, this is our third show in five days. This is incredible. Again, we are uh, we're growing. It's a brand new channel. We're getting all kinds of... Um, outcry from support and people want to report their uh, exposure to corruption in their lifetime. But tonight is a very, very special night for us. I mean, who would imagine in three shows we could book such an incredible, incredible guest. Before we get there, I just want to, I want to mention something here. Um, my mod, who's been with me ever since this has started, is Audrey Presti, all right? And I thought I, thought I told this story a little bit um, last night. But I just said to her, I said, Audrey, this would be incredible. Just make it happen. And I didn't know she knew anyone, nothing at all. So anyways, she gets back to me in 10 minutes. She says, I made the connection. Calls will be made. You'll be notified. And I'm going to tell you, within a half hour, I was set up for six o'clock to talk to Janine Driver. So what I like to do is make an acknowledgement to um, the ladies from Waltham. We have Jen Brogna, Jody Roper, and Kerry Driver Strollo, all right? These are the people that help Audrey and to make this happen tonight, okay? So with, with further ado, um, let's bring up Janine Driver, and we're gonna have a little intro. Her bio is incredible, and I'm gonna let Janine introduce herself to all you people tonight. Sean, I love that you're doing this, and you know, I love that you know, someone from law enforcement, numerous people from law enforcement are coming out and saying that this is suspicious. And I, I think it's a good testimony, testimony to, you know, at the end of the day, anyone in law enforcement, federal, state, local, the main role is protection. It's public protection. It's public safety. And um, to know that people, you know, it, it's kind of this blue line. A lot of people don't cross it. And I love that you're speaking up. I am on the same, I didn't know this, that I was on the same page with as you. My sister Carrie called me and she's like, hey, a girl I went to high school with wants your cell phone number because 
um, she wants to talk to you. I'm like, what does she want to talk to me about? Because there's like some crazy people out there. Like, I'm like, I, I don't want my phone out. I mean, Google it. You know, I don't want my number out there. And uh, little did I know I'd end up having a, a future long life, hopefully relationship with you, your wife, your family. I, I'm a, a big fan and uh, I can't thank you enough for doing what you're doing. Oh, Janine, let me, the pleasure is all mine. I mean, I, uh, I knew when I first spoke to you, I said, we're going to have a great relationship. Is it something about, well, you're from the area, which, yeah. which makes it great. You're down in Virginia. I lived in Virginia, right? You lived in Alexandria. I lived in Alexandria. We just have so much in common. Uh, yeah. You take improv. My wife teaches improv. I mean, it's <laughs> it's crazy. So, it is I mean, crazy. I mean, listen. This Your wife is, used to be a model and, and Dave well, Scott Bayo. Actress, and Dave Scott Bayo. Scott Bayo and charge and ch Charles in charge the whole nine. <laughs> But anyways, enough about that. This is about you tonight and, and, and your connection to Karen Reed, okay? All right, let's dive so in. Let's, dive let's in. give us a little background, um, Janine, uh, how you started, because I remember myself as a rookie cop, uh, no, not as a cop, as an agent. We would go to these seminars, and they'd bring in guys. And one guy was from Texas. I don't know. He was a might know him. This was way back. We're talking 15, 20 yeah, years. I mean, Mike Bryant from Texas used to. He be. might be tall, big, tall guy. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk Remember. about the hands in the in the front yeah, of the pocket. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you know, he was like a, a pioneer. But I'm sure since then, it's been so uh, um, perfected. So Janine, I don't want to. I don't have a voice left. But let's oh, let's give it all to you, Janine. That's a lot. Yeah, numerous nights to be here. And I, I, I'll i be touching my eyes throughout the night just to let everybody know I, I have an eye issue. So I've, I found out that my eyes don't produce enough fluid. So oh, wow. um, you see me touch my eyes. That's why I, I, I forgot. I'll have to put drops in at some point. All right. Here's the deal. Uh, my background, I, I'm ATF, investigator with ATF, 18 years. I loved working for ATF. Uh, I was on the white collar, so, collar crime side. So firearms trafficking, illegal manufacturing and importing of explosives. And at, if you're at almost all federal agencies, other than the CIA and the FBI, train at a place called FLETSI, the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center in Georgia. Sure. And I was taking a bunch of classes down there and I kept seeing the in our in our workbooks, JJ Newberry moments. And it would always be like this really cool shit that I was like, oh, I, I believe what this is saying. This, you know, rapport is people like people like themselves. You know, don't say it's interrogation. It's an interview. An interview is a conversation with a purpose. Like I remember these JJ Newberry moments and I, I just I loved it. I went down the rabbit hole in what we now call body language. Back then they called it kinesics. And I, I just found it fascinating. Uh, I put it to the test. It worked. And to make a long story short, I picked up the phone and I called him. The way that your team, Sean, reached out to get in touch with me. I, I went online. This is before they had Google. But I did go online and I tried to find as much as I could about this J.J. Newberry. He's what's called a truth wizard. A truth wizard can detect deception at over 85% accuracy. And he's the number one truth wizard in the world. Oh, it's wow. sad now, though, because he has dementia and it's it's just devastating. But that sounds weird to say truth wizard. It's like it's kind of a cheeky term, but it's a psychological term. A woman named Dr. Maureen O'Sullivan, who's since passed, did this huge study. And sometimes you can detect deception with people's word choices or with their behavior or their micro expressions. And sometimes none of those things are there, but you, certain people have a vibe. In that show, Lie to Me, it used to be on Fox. I think it's now on Netflix or one of these right. shows or whatever. Uh, that show is based on the research of a guy named Dr. Paul Ekman. I call J.J. Newberry and I say, I want to be the next J.J. Newberry. Will you be my mentor? Wow. It took him about, I'd say, six weeks to get back to me. And he called. And I go, it took you long enough. I've been waiting for your phone call for six weeks. A California guy. I'm a Boston girl. You know, this. I want to talk about this with Karen Reed. That's Boston girls. We've got these big yes. personalities. And the guys. I heard you swearing a little bit on the commercial break there. I was like, oh, he's a man after my heart. You know? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so oh so what God. happened was, uh, JJ called me. He goes, I wanted to do due diligence and ask around an ATF, if you know, who I am. Am I authentic? And authenticity to me is super important. And that means people are going to like me and people aren't going to like me. And that's what we have with Karen Reed. I believe she's authentic. And because of that, her big, bold, strong personality, uh, I don't think she's everyone's cup of tea. And we're, we're going to explore that a little bit tonight as well. That's awesome. Where is it coming from? And, and it, maybe you're like her. Maybe you're like Karen Reed. And, and you know, I swear, I did four TED Talks, two went viral. And I swear they went viral. It's like, 
8 million people combined watching them. But she if you said, read the comments, everyone's like, she's so angry. Imagine being married to that one. She's really oh angry about body language. And it's connected to our movement DNA. I'm going to hopefully talk a little bit about that with Karen tonight. And so I get trained by JJ Newberry. He brings me in, introduces me to a guy named Dr. Mark Frank. So I get trained by him. And then ultimately, Dr. Paul Ekman, whose research is on the same level as Freud. As a matter of fact, Dr. Paul Ekman is one of 100 psychologists to ever influence the world on the same list as Freud. So um, learned about micro expressions, later learned about statement analysis, words that have hidden meaning, and some handwriting analysis, which we won't talk about tonight. But uh, And then trained with a guy named Frank Marsh. Frank Marsh um, worked at the FBI Behavioral Unit for a bit. Uh, unbelievable guy. Like... I do, Frank Marsh and I do a class, how to spout effed up people before it's too late. And we do it for free mm -hmm. and so people can get in touch with me. We do it for free because we want to safeguard people. We, we care about you and we care oh, about nice. you. Smart decisions. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so that's kind of the long story short, retired, left the ATF early at the age of 38. And, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Wrote a book. I came on as a baby, wrote a book mm -hmm. and became a New York Times bestseller, translated in 18 languages. Wrote a second book. It became a Washington Post bestseller. I think that's translated in 17 languages. Amazing. And the rest is history. So uh, I train with law enforcement. I, I literally receive training. I'm an eternal student. And I'm constantly giving training, including the state of Massachusetts. So the state of Massachusetts had a big grant like two years ago. And that grant money had to be connected with human trafficking. And wow. I received a huge amount of money from that grant to teach classes. There were all day classes. I had two levels, level one and level two. Mm -hmm. I trained the state police of Massachusetts, local police of Mass Massachusetts, and the sheriff's office. Wow. And a couple agents, a couple of federal agents came. Mm -hmm. uh, I think overall in the state of Massachusetts, there were probably, I probably trained a couple thousand people that in that year. That. Amazing. And, you know, I, I don't know if I had any guys from Canton in there or not, but maybe uh, you did. You never know. I might have. I might maybe have. Maybe you had the chief of police in there. He he went to every every train there was. You know, I so might you know have. I, I might have. Hey, listen. By the way, just because uh, some some cops are making bad decisions, it doesn't mean everyone in there is uh, exactly. Corrupt. I'm sure there's people in the Canton Police Department that are like, you know, doing the hail mary, like let's about time clean up this department. You know. I, I believe so. I mean, we had a beautiful interview with a, a retired Canton police sergeant on Friday night. Okay. And he had some serious stories to talk about. And we had a phenomenal response to that to that interview. It was okay. beautiful. So I always remember I went to Fletzy also when I was with the Capitol Police, 1979. It was February, this time February to April. And it was uh, crazy back then. But wow. Yeah. So, um, well, so I ended up working there. So I, I went on a detail. A detail is when like a, a government, for the people who don't know, uh, a federal agency lets you, another agency borrow you for a little bit. It's called right. a detail. And so I went to Fletzy for a year. I taught classes on analytical interviewing, detecting deception, body language, um, supervisor training, uh, courtroom testimony, and which wow. has come in incredibly handy analyzing cases for court TV. <laughs> And uh, then I also did a detail at the FBI in, over in West Virginia for uh, 10 months. So really, uh, I've lived all over the country with ATF. In, in any of your travels, did you ever meet a special agent, Jennifer Coffin-Daffer? No, no. <laughs> Thank God. No, that's it's oh. just a, it's, it's, it's a joke. The, oh, the, yeah. people, the people in the chat will get it. No, it's okay. just a, it's a joke. I don't so. think I did. I don't think so. No, I and mean, you're probably, <laughs> probably better off anyways. No, it's it's it's. It's kind of a joke. Well, that, that is awesome because I, I was going to come on tonight and hide my eyes, hide my face because I know how you guys are. You know, your camera, your camera is following you. I like that. Yeah, it, yeah. I can, I can move and it falls. I stand up, it follows me. Mine doesn't. Uh, if do I that. put, a, if I put a thumb up or something like that, where if I put a thumb, it gives me a thumb. I don't know. It's, it's, I don't do yeah, it. something I like do. that. I got crazy little things that happen. Let me see. If I can do some. I was with Dylan in Wales. And uh, this thing happened the other night. Uh, what the? Here it goes. I guess it's gone now. But uh, oh well, there it is. You see it? There you go. I <laughs> you like see it. This? You're, yeah, I'm it's so raining. Cool. You're ahead of me on this uh, technology. Look stuff. at me. Look at me. Oh, Four I'm days fine. into this, how you doing? <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Anyways, there's uh, <laughs> these people know me. There's a surprise. I went on a rant last night for about you an did? hour. I had a. Janine, now you talk about authenticity, right? Yes, I have a What's, random. You know, what is a good definition for, for someone to be authentic? In other words, 
true to themselves, you know. I, I think <clears throat> I think people how I would define authenticity is who you are with your family and your friends or on a television show or in an interview is the same version of you. Right. You know, I think a lot from me, in my opinion, a lot of people say, well, I put on a lot of different hats. So I have to become a right. different version of me. Right. I don't think that that's authenticity. I'm the same yeah. version. I, mean, I remember I did this. Um, I, I've been on the Today Show for a little bit. And at one time I was on and I'm very flirty. And Al, um, Willie Geis, who I have a crush on. Oh, I, yeah. I, I love Willie Geis. I met his wife once. <laughs> and I said to her, I go, oh my God, you're Willie Geis wife at an event. And she's like, yeah, I go, I have the biggest secret crush on your husband. <laughs> I told my husband at the time, I'm now divorced, but I told my husband, he goes, I think you don't understand the word secret. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, but, but I love really authentic. Guys. Yeah, right? so you're he authentic. said to me, and Al Roker's on the other side, and it was like Movember where they have these big beards. Oh, yeah, I yeah. Sure. On, sitting on an airline with body language on an airline row seat. So they had an old Pan Am three seats in a row. Really, and I, I say to Willie Geist, I touch his hair and I go, "Ooh, look at your fancy beard! You're so fancy." Jeez. Wow. And Al Roker like looks like this, and I look <laughs> over. I go, "Al, do you want me to touch your beard?" Oh, and he's nice. like, "No thanks, no thanks." <laughs> right. Well, that interview, they got a lot of information, a lot of like tweets about it or whatever social media feedback. The next morning, Al Roker and Willie Geist talked about me. Hmm. Now I say this because authenticity. So many people told me. Janine, you're on TV. You can't do that. You can't touch Willie Geist. You can't flirt with people. You need to be polished in a fancy suit. And, right. you know, you you have your it's, it's the Today Show, right? It was the number one show, morning show. I don't know if it still is, but um, I just showed up as me. And do you know what? I've also, I was on the Wendy Williams show and mm -hmm. they, they I was on there once. They never had me back. Want to really? know why? That show to me was inauthentic. They, everyone was gossiping about each other. Oh, yeah. I'm a very positive person. Sure. And it, as, as we dive into this Karen Reed scenario, if you want to be better at detecting deception, the best way to do it is not to be a skeptic. The best way to do it is to be a positive person and look not for the lies, but look for the truth. Right. If you're looking for the lies, you're going to find something that's... And by the way, we're going to talk about an anomaly today because... Okay. Interesting, because Karen tells three different stories, right, that we're going to highlight tonight. Beautiful. One, one of the stories she talks about is how her and um, John reconnected through Facebook, right? Right. She tells that story. Sure. Another story she talks about is New Year's, New Year's Eve, right. the New Year's Eve debacle, right? She doesn't go into a lot of details, but, you know, the New Year's Eve debacle. The third story is what happened in the night in question with John. Mm -hmm. and right. And here's the deal. Those two first stories have something in common and Karen changes something in that third story. Hmm. And so we're going to explore it today. Oh, ignore it. I have I <laughs> you know what, my son had to get a, a physical today. He's going to Costa Rica yeah. on a trip and he did not know he's 18 how to sign his name in, in cursive because they don't teach kids this. Exactly. Today. So I had to sign his name on the palm of my hand. There was no paper. And so he could then sign the medical form at the doctor's yeah. office. Yeah, amazing. No, I'm the same that's way. Authenticity, right? I'm telling you. Me I, telling my story is authenticity. That's what the, you are who you are, right? What you see is what you get, yeah, right? So that's, that's, yeah. I know, I, think, I know you're a straight shooter. I think people saw I think people saw me last night. And they got what they got. I mean, oh I, my I, God. I, I had to let it go. To watch it. I have like a yeah. man in here that's driving me nuts here, so. Yeah. Okay. okay well, that's awesome. You want to open it up? Any questions? Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's great. Okay. Let's go in. Sorry. Okay. I do not know what's happening there. All right. Okay. So you're down to present. To present. Yeah. Share screen. All right. Chrome tab. You have the Chrome tab there. Yeah. Okay. There you go. I see it. Okay. okay. Let me uh, let me do this now. How are we gonna do this? Here we go. We're gonna bring it up. And here we go. Okay. You got control. Thank you. So you have it. Uh, oh, look, I just said so. We're going to talk about the word so. Oh, so. Uh -huh. We're going to talk about that. Uh, hey, how about this? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. What about that? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Aha. That, well, that would be very suspicious if someone suddenly said, uh huh. <laughs> this is crazy. So what happened that night of the murder? Uh huh. You know, people would be like, yeah. that was a uh -huh. weird answer. I have a guy that says, and when Sean goes, aha, uh -huh, you know, he says, aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, the taillight's broken. I don't. This guy does it all the time. That's 
I'm glad you said that. I oh, gosh, it. that's funny. I say so all the time. It's part of what I call my baseline. This is, I have a newsletter people can follow for free. Eventually it's going to be $7 to people, but it's free if people want to watch it. And I'm doing a four part series in the driver's seat is my newsletter. And it's called the shocking truth about Karen Reed that prosecutors don't want us to know. So the first part came out this evening, about an hour ago. How about second, that? Today, so we're going to talk about that, which is statement analysis. Words have hidden meaning. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about body language, micro expressions on the face and eye movements. Although I will talk about it here tonight if people want to know a little bit about that. Sure. But that newsletter will come out tonight, tomorrow. And this is just the newsletter. And inside the newsletter are video clips. And so you just go to Substack. It's substack.com. And you can put in in the driver's seat or my name, Janine Driver, and then you can follow mm -hmm. me and get my newsletters. I've already, this is, uh, I think, my 22nd newsletter. So you can, newsletter. Uh, last week we talked about sarcasm, which by the way, Karen Reed uh, has a little snarky sarcasm there in one mm -hmm. of her answers. So we'll, oh. we'll talk about that, uh, perhaps. So here, this is just background story, which everyone that's here probably already knows this. So I'm going to skip through that. Baselining is so important. It's, it's getting someone's normal behavior. I'm just showing you what that's in here, but we're going to skip over to the videos. Sure. Uh, we're going to talk about statement analysis. And statement analysis was created by uh, the United States. I see a typo. I'll fix that later. Uh, Marshall Mark McGlish. He's got some books out there. Really cool. Fascinating. He also has some online training if people are interested in it. Uh, quite frankly, I'm known as a body language expert, Sean, and you at home. However, when it comes to detecting deception, my expert opinion, training the CIA, the FBI, Scotland Yard Police, the Canadian Mounties, list goes on and on, corporate titans. How I make a living is I speak to corporate America for sales and leadership. So right here is that I want everyone to know you always have to baseline someone, get someone's baseline. What is their normal behavior? Right. All right. Let's look at this one. The, the power of the word I. So the power of the word I. I is incredibly important because I is ownership. I is ownership. And when Karen Reed says what? I did not kill John O'Keefe. I have never harmed a hair on John O'Keefe's head. Mm. You see two eyes. She doesn't say, you know, she doesn't say obviously. When right. someone says something like obviously, which is what we heard Roger Goodell say. Remember Roger Goodell? Sure. Roger Goodell, head of the NFL, when Ray Rice sucker punched his uh, then fiance, later wife, in an elevator over in Atlantic City. And, and eventually he got, he got a couple days suspended, Ray Rice. And then TMZ gets a hold of that footage. It's horrifying to see that mm. footage. Oh, that's awful. Roger Goodell then does an interview. And when he does the interview, it's loaded with potential deception, what I think he's lying. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he said is, obviously, we didn't know it, it was as bad as it was. Obviously, we didn't see a copy of the footage. Police came out from... Atlantic City and said, not only did they send it directly to Roger Goodell, but they also sent it to the NFL. So they sent it to two different places. So it's, I think it's very unlikely, my dog's barking outside, very unlikely uh, that he didn't see it. So there's no obviously here. She goes right into the eye. She's straight into this denial. And let's see what I have here. I did not kill John O'Keefe. I've never harmed a hair on John O'Keefe's head. Now, what's <laughs> odd about this? What, what do you think's odd about this, Sean? Um, well, her eye contact is direct. Uh, that's the first thing I picked up. She's not looking anywhere. It's like, it's to me, I mean, I'm looking at it. She's making great eye contact. I did not kill John O'Keefe. I've never harmed a hair on John O'Keefe's head. Okay, great. So the eye contact's good. Now, some people when they go on TV, they don't know if they're supposed to look at the camera or the person. You're supposed to right. look at the person that's talking to you, all right? Sure. Now, well, I did not kill John O'Keefe. I've never harmed a hair on John O'Keefe's head. All right. This is congruent with someone who's telling the truth. She's using two eyes. What's weird to me, the anomaly is, why at this point she's not saying my boyfriend. Now, I want you to keep in mind, and I know you and I talked about this a little bit, Sean, offline a, a couple of days ago when we talked. This interview didn't happen a week, two weeks, three weeks after John was killed. Right. You know, this interview happened what a year later? A year, year and a half. A year, year and a half later. Maybe nine months. That was it. Was the um, in the summertime? Yeah. So happened. I want people. So if we play, I like to play devil's advocate. So devil's advocate. It makes sense. She's not going to say my boyfriend. He's been gone for a year and a half. Right. He's no longer her boyfriend. Right. Does that make sense? And but I think someone, someone trained in the way I'm trained, is going to look at it the way I did and say, wait, this is this is off. 
And this is why when it comes to detecting deception, you always want to ask questions. You always want to be curious. I think the most important mm -hmm. thing is curious. And sure. so I was curious and I'm like, this, that just felt weird to me. And then I'm like, there's something here because she was congruent with telling the truth. She right. is giving good eye contact. Um, she's saying the I statements and um, she's taking full ownership of her assertion. And, of and I think she leaned in too, which is another sign of She's leaning in. I did not kill John O'Keefe. I've never harmed a hair on John O'Keefe's head. Yeah. Now, you may notice that she's nodding her head here. Now, some people in my world put a lot of weight on nodding the head. It right. means that she's she's agreeing with what she's saying. Like, I never did it. So right. it makes sense. Like, if I, if I said uh, uh, Tom Brady, I might say Tom Brady's the best football player ever on earth. I'm saying it, but I'm shaking my head no, because my right. brain is thinking no one's ever going to beat him. He's never yeah. going to be a better quarterback than Tom Brady. So be careful on seeing head nodding if you are watching people online or you're you know, trying to tell if your kids are lying or your significant other. If you're in hiring, you know, hiring, I, I, I have a course, how to stop bad hires, <laughs> because oh, you, wow. it costs a lot of money when you do a bad hire. Be careful of looking at those head nods and thinking, you know. Uh, what someone's doing. So eyes, eyes are really, really important. Um, research in forensic psychology suggests the use of eye statements can be indicative of truthfulness. Mm. Contrary to liars who withhold a strong denial and use lighter denials. By the way, liars will often say something like I'm innocent. And it's interesting because we do hear that from, um, uh, you know, attorney Jackson, uh, Karen Reed's attorney, that uh, my client is innocent. It's okay to say your client's innocent, but here's the deal. Everyone's innocent in the United States of America until what? Proven guilty. Until proven guilty. That is a weak denial. So to say, uh, if you were to ever get arrested, by the way, some people might say, don't teach people how to be better liars. You're not going to remember it in the moment because stress is going to happen. You're going to sure. try to remember the truth, the lie, the cover up. It's not going to happen. But truthful people, they say the actual crime. Like Johnny Depp, when he was on the stand, he just declared it. He's like, I didn't you know, um, put a bottle inside Amber Heard, right? Like mm -hmm. he just claimed it. What liars will do is they'll use minimizing language. I didn't hurt her. I didn't force myself on her. Boom. What does Karen say? I did not kill him. Wow. She didn't say I did not harm him. She goes right for the kill. And with the I statement, very, very strong denial. Can't get any stronger. And her body language is congruent with telling the truth. Sure. Okay. So we get out of there. Now, my question is, and I asked this in the newsletter and I asked for you, and maybe you know, Sean, my question is here, in statement analysis, people say things that are true. Like someone might say, um, hey, have you ever done, have you ever done heroin? And the person would say, oh, I would never do heroin. Right. But they were just doing heroin in the car 20 minutes <laughs> earlier. And after they did it, they're like, this is the last time I'm doing heroin. Right. I'll never do this again. Right. I would never is talking about the future, Right. All right. So in statement analysis, the, the truth is hidden in the words, but sometimes we've got to take out some words in the beginning and the end. My question, and maybe you know this because because you're more connected in, into the story than me. I just hopped on a, a week or so ago and I talked about it on Court TV a couple of times, but sure. I, I just dove deep, deeply recently in the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. All right. My question here, and here's where I have it, is at what point does Karen realize with 100% certainty that she did not hit John with the car. Because she is saying it with certainty here that she did not kill him. Was it when she first saw his injuries and saw pictures of his injuries? Or the fact that the blood wasn't uh, like crystallized in ice? It was still right. fresh. And if she had hit him at whatever, 12, 1 in the morning, it, and now it's, you know, 5.36 in the morning, it would have been frozen. Or was it the fact that the owner of the house, Brian Albert, Come on, you're a Boston cop. You've got another cop dead in your front lawn and you right. don't come outside. Was it then like, hmm, that's odd, you know, or was it other things that just didn't add up? Or did she actually recall seeing John walk up to the side door and stick his head in the house? Do you know? Do you know what it is? I no. I mean, she did not do it. Right. I believe it came after the fact because on the scene after finding John, and I think there's a couple of things. I think they had people in the car with her, the Jen McCabe's and the Kerry uh, Roberts of the world, yeah. and planting things in her head, knowing that she was going to be in, encountering a very emotional, mm -hmm. crazy scene. I don't. I think it was way after the impact of seeing John. I believe I, that's what I believe. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. That's that's how I would probably 
look at it. I don't yeah, know. That, that's that's what I suspect. That's that's what I I suspect, right? Right. And, and I think that when you put the big picture together, I think that kind of information is really important. Right. Now, I like to play devil's advocate. So here's my devil's advocate. The use of I statements does not automatically guarantee truthfulness. Why? Mm -hmm. Be prepared to lie. So liars prepare, some liars prepare their lies in advance, including strategic mm -hmm. use of I statements to sound more convincing. Mm -hmm. And some lawyers, which I also train lawyers, uh, they'll coach. I'll tell lawyers, stop saying your client's innocent mm -hmm. and keep saying my client did not kill blank. My client did not rob the bank. My right. client did not sexually abuse his job. Like, be careful of saying my client is innocent because we're all innocent. It, 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 sure. You hear a lot of notorious liars say they're innocent. So you can be coached. I'm using the eye. I do not think that's the case here with Erin Reen. I think she's telling the truth. Now, retelling the conversation with John from that night. All right, let's look here. Look at this face. Tomorrow, my newsletter is all about the, the several faces of Karen Reen. There's a lot. Mm. There's a lot. Right here, we have a little contempt happening here. Contempt is moral superiority when a smirk comes out. You can see it in her eyebrows, too. Um, contempt is, is uh, I, I know information like i am morally superior to what's happening here like right. and she knows way more than any of us of course right sure uh and let's listen here karen it takes us inside a conversation she said she had with john after the house party let's see if i believe it i said can we make sure we're welcome here nobody extended the invite to me i didn't hear the invite extended to you all right, I want to watch it again because I'm going to ask you a question. I about said, this, Sean. can we make sure we're welcome here? <clears throat> Nobody extended the invite to me. I didn't hear the invite extended to you. All right, body language wise, and what I'm going to talk about in tomorrow's newsletter is notice her illustrators. So her illustrators, illustrators are hand gestures and body movements mm -hmm. that match the story. You right. tell me, Sean, you're down in Florida. You caught a fish, a kid, fish is this big. You are climbing, okay. you're climbing a ladder to paint the house. These right. are illustrators are also called emblems. An emblem is a common recognizable sign like this. Call me. Or if I'm at a restaurant and I go, check, please. Those yeah, are I, I use this all the time. Yeah. Call me. Yeah. That's part of some people's baseline. Some people don't use uh, hand gestures at all. They tend to be very kinesthetic, more soft yeah. and spoken, and they might not use hand gestures. Karen Reed uses hand gestures. Right. Here's the deal, though. Her hand gestures are congruent with her story that she's telling. And what I mean by that is, her hand gestures come a half a beat before her words. I'm going to play it again. Hmm. Her, her hand gestures. So, Sean, I want you to go like this. Call me. Call me. Great. Now go call me. Call me. Feel how it's so inauthentic and, and you feel like it's weird. This is the difference yeah. between great acting and bad acting. When you watch a yeah. movie and you're like, ah, I didn't really like the acting. Yeah, I didn't believe that. Their body language is coming either at the same time as the word right. or slightly after the word. Right. Truthful people, you can slow it down and watch the movement screen by screen. The movement mm -hmm. comes a half a beat before the words, which is what we have across the board, except for one scenario with Karen which has to do with her alcohol. So right here, um, we see the movement is con is congruent. She also is moving her hands and telling us, right? Well, let's watch. Right. I said, can we make sure we're welcome here? Nobody extended the invite to me. I didn't hear the invite extended to you. So you see, I didn't hear the invite extended to you in her hand gesture. Let's watch it one more time. I said, right. can we make sure we're welcome here? Nobody extended the invite to me. I didn't hear the. So look, before she says invite, what mm -hmm. happens? The hand comes up. So right. look, her hand is up and we don't even hear the word invite yet. Ready? Right. Watch. The invite extended to you. You. Okay. And you, know right. what, you know what's telling you about that? What? She's remembering that. You know why? Because she was driving the car. She, she's pointing to where he was sitting. I Isn't just, that interesting? Because that was my going to be my question for you, yeah. Sean, which was this. And we didn't plan this, right? No, no. The, my question yeah. was this. The way it's edited, and you know, this is a big disclaimer. These, these, the, thank God for the news, though. We get a lot of interesting stories from the news. Right. And they're editing it to make an interesting story. They're taking sure. out the ums and the so's. I want them in. I want to hear the whole entire thing beginning to end. Yeah. As a matter of fact, a great interviewing question that we teach at law enforcement and, and uh, Lena Cisco gave me years ago from uh, NCI. Um, uh, NCIS, she interviewed Taliban over in Guant Guantanamo Bay. She has a great book out there called Honest Answers. Everyone oh, should get that book. It's unbelievable. It should be a textbook for law enforcement, mm. which is this. This is the question Leanna taught me is tell me everything from the beginning. 
Your mm -hmm. kids are out late. You, you found marijuana or edibles in their drawer. You think your significant other's cheating. You're a hiring manager, a recruiter, a supervisor. There's some, he said, she said case. You're a judge. Tell me everything from the beginning. And they're mm -hmm. like, well, what, what, where do you want me to start? You just say, tell me everything from the beginning. Right. And then that's giving them the opportunity to, you know, basically hang themselves. So what happens here is not only do we see these hand gestures, she says this statement and in the news, this clip makes it sound like she's saying this at the bar because after they make the statement, they go, then she leaves the bar and goes to the part after party house. But that's right. not the case, right? Because no. she says this, Can, are you sure we're welcomed here? Right. So this indicates to me, she already left the bar because if she right. was at Bar, she would have said, are you sure we're welcomed there? There, right. Because right. she says here, right I was there. going to ask you, right. was it while she was driving there or when, when she was about to pull up to the house? No, I, I believe there was a there was a conversation when she pulled up, there was a, a pause. And I I believe that that conversation with the car was stopped and she you see that tape, she's pointing where he was sitting. Yes, because she's driving. Right. That's what, that I'm gonna play it again. I'm gonna play it again. Yeah. I love that insight, Sean. That's such a great. Yeah. That's a, such a great ad because yeah. I wasn't 100 percent sure. I wanted. I just knew the language because this newsletter is about language. The language was off here. The way the TV has it edited because ABC has it saying, and then next they drove. No, this yeah, happened no. inside the car because she exactly. said, "Are you sure we're welcomed here?" Here. That's right. That's a great catch. Wow. All right. Let's let's go. Beautiful. <laughs> All right, let's watch it again. I said, can we make sure we're welcome here? Nobody extended the invite to me. I didn't hear the invite extended to you. Yes. Yeah, see Pointing that? Right where he's sitting. Right. Congruent with someone who's telling the truth. So do I believe that this conversation happened? Yes, I do. Right? Yeah. Yes, right. I do. You know what's funny about that pointing? What? When I'm here doing these things, and I remember Canton, I point into the house, and then I'm literally like I'm saying, and then I'm pointing down to Fairview up at... Uh, Cedar Crest. I'm pointing like I'm standing right there. And it's it when I see when I review these things, like, what the Christ am I pointing at? And then I start saying, there's the house, there's yeah. Cedar Crest up there. It's yeah. just crazy because you know you, you're acting like you're right there. That's how I do things. Listen, she, she's right there. People, truthful people do it like that, Sean. Now let's do a sidebar story. Just okay. call it. So Jesse Smollett staged a hate crime in Jesus. Chicago a couple of years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's not enough hate in the world. Stages is hate crime. I did a, um, a, a Facebook live, a, a, a YouTube live, and, and it's over on YouTube if people want to see it. It's like four, three hours long. Nice. So nice. I put it in drugs. It's intense. But I had to get ahead of it because the next day you ended up getting arrested. So like when these things break, if you're a human lie detector, you like you got to stay up all night to get ahead of it because once they're arrested, anyone can say, I know they did it. You know, like this this newsletter before she's like, you know, sues the state of Massachusetts for millions of dollars. Yeah. I, I need to be like out here because I believe that she's telling the truth. But Jesse Smollett, when telling the story about being attacked, guess what? So he's on TV. He's telling the story. He says the attacker comes. You know, they scream my name, Empire. My name's not Empire. And they scream my name, Empire. And next thing you know, they kick me. In, he, uh, the attacker hits me in my back. Hits me back. No movement. This is how he's telling the story. Yeah. How would a truthful person? I'm walking, okay. down, I'm walking down the street. Some guy screams Empire. I like turn around and my name's not Empire. And this, this guy, and by the way, he's not an attacker yet. He no. just some guy. So he switched up the order because it was rehearsed. So I'm like, oh, this was rehearsed. He mm. gave the title. You're the title. You're the attacker. Right. When we recant, we remember a story, we remember the story in the way that it happened, the order that happened. And by the way, truthful people sometimes remember more details later, especially after 72 hours of an, after an incident. That's a, but a, I think a lot of people who are trained in our world think mm -hmm. that, oh, they added more details. They're lying. Truthful right. people will remember because, under, you know, you're in a fight or flight. You're, you're, right. You lose peripheral vision. Your your stomach is stopping to digest. You know, all the blood is going to your arms and your legs right. to fight or to run. The adrenaline is pumping. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. So, Jesse Smollett, you see it. And I and I'm on Celebrity Lie Detector Live, it's, it's a free show I do sometimes on, on YouTube. I say, I sh then showed videos of um, people really getting beaten up and talking about the attack. And, and mm -hmm. then someone that got mauled by a bear talking about the attack, you know, walking on the street, the bear comes at me. And whether it's a person or an animal, we relive the story with our illustrators, which we see here happening. Sure. Yeah. All right. Let's dive in. Let's see what else we have here. Do, 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 do. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, so this is where I say, like, instead of saying there, so we know that this conversation is happening in the car or once they get there. A tense situation is next, what I talk about in the newsletter, which is um, the tense, past tense versus present tense versus future right. tense. Gotcha. So Karen Reed makes a strong declaration of what? I did not kill. So she's using past tense. I never harmed a hair on John O'Keefe's body. Right. Well, let's right here is if you go back to OJ Simpson. Now, Karen Reed could have said, I would have never. Right. This is what a lot of liars do. Uh, Karen, did you kill, you know, do you kill your boyfriend? I would never do something like that. I would never even hurt a hair on his body. And we think that's a denial. We think it's a strong denial. It is a weak denial because I would never is about the future. Like I said a couple minutes ago, let's watch OJ Simpson here. OJ Simpson is asked if he owned Bruno Magli shoes. Mm. The reason this is important, Sean, and you at home is because Bruno Magli shoe prints were at the scene of the crime. Of course. Yeah. This is the civil case. OJ says, I would never, if, if Bruno Magli makes shoes that they showed in court, I would never own those ugly ass shoes. Right. What you don't see here is minutes later, they show him a picture. What do you think he's walking on the football field in? Those ugly Bruno ass Magli. shoes. Yeah, like yeah. That he calls ugly ass shoes, Bruno Magli shoes. Yeah. Watch, watch OJ here, but listen to his language, right? Mm -hmm. So the question was, did you own Bruno Magli shoes? What's the correct answer? No. No. I did not. I did no. not. Strongest denial. So I did not is a, is a weaker denial. No is always the strongest, but you can right. add after the no, you can say I did not, right. or you can say absolutely. Right. The, the thing we're looking for, the strongest denial is no. No. Right. I will say when you say absolutely not, I would never do something like that. Just ask my friends. This overcompensating, it's yeah. it convincing. Truthful people convey, liars try to convince. Right. So let's watch OJ here. Hmm. Bruno Magley makes shoes. That look like the shoes they had in court that's involved in this case. I would have never worn those ugly ass shoes. Hmm. Okay. The question is, did you own Bruno Magli shoes? The answer should be yes or no. Bruno Magli makes shoes that look like the shoes they had in court that's involved in this case. I would have never worn those ugly ass shoes. I would never have owned hmm. them, right? But what do we hear here, right from right from um, Karen Reed is I did not. Right. All right. Now we get, by the way, she uses four. I statements within 14 seconds when recounting the story where she dropped John off at the after party. Right. Now there right. are some hotspots here I want to talk about. Uh, and I want you to keep that in mind that she does use four I statements. This is huge. What some people will say is you now. Um, ready? So, Hey, Karen, you know, tell me about what happened when, when you went to the after party house, right? You went to the after right. party house, with Brian Albert. Uh, what is it? You leave a bar, you have a couple drinks. You yeah. don't even know if you're invited to the party. You're driving there, you get there, you know, your boyfriend gets out of the car, you watch him. Some people use that. Now you right. is a distancing word. The only time- right, I was gonna say, I pushed, pushing away. That's what yeah. I was thinking, you're pushing away. The you only time- you know, Go ahead. No, I'm just saying, a person that, that does that, they're kind of dissing themselves. They're saying, well, you know, they're not including themselves. They're not saying, right. well, I left. Right. I got it. Right. Yeah. Do you know what? Nixon, um, Nixon came out. And if you have me back another time, I'll, I'll bring some of these other clips. If you oh, absolutely. If you're if you're, you're always welcome. You're always okay. welcome. Well, if your followers are interested, I don't know if they're interested. No, I'm sure they're interested. Trust Nixon, me. Nixon uh, was interviewed in these really famous um, interviews, right? Mm -hmm. And in one of the interviews, he says, you know, when you become the president of the United States, you know, um, you, you, you know, they don't, people didn't know this, but I wanted to make a difference in people's lives. So he goes from you to I, now he's owning it. And he goes, and I became the president and I let down the American people. I let down kids who wanted to go into politics. I let down people who believed in me. This is such a strong acceptance of how he failed. It's right. owning it. He could have said, Listen, ownership. You That's right. make ownership. bad decisions. You don't, you know, you don't always follow the rules. You, you, you. He didn't. He says, I, such strong denial, such strong denial. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at here, um, the drop off. All right. This is mm -hmm. big. So here, the drop off at Albert's house. This, there was something that wasn't sitting right with me with listening to Karen tell this story. So let's do a little comparison between these three stories. How Karen Reed and John O'Keefe reconnected on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And then two incidences from the past, New Year's Eve, and then when, when Karen dropped off 
um, John at the Albert House, the after party, right? So let's first look at this. I'm going to I'm going to scan ahead and give everyone the answers because I want you to listen when you watch the video. I'm going to play the video twice. I really want you to pay close attention. These in statement analysis, things happen so quickly that sometimes we miss it and we don't realize words have hidden meaning. Not only words, but uh, the way we say things like current or past tense. Do you have kids? Yes, I do. How many? Three. Three. Name one of them. Who, who give me one? Jerry. Who? Kerry. Kerry. Uh, is Kerry the oldest? Yes, she is. Okay. When you're asking people the names of their children, the order should always go oldest to youngest. Right. If the order changes, they're they're telling you this other person is top of mind. Hmm. If I said, name one of the other ones, name the baby. Aiden. Aiden. If I said, uh, name one of your kids, you said Aiden. I go, is Aiden the oldest? You said no. I'm like, oh, what's going on for Aiden? All I have to say is, oh, what's going on for Aiden? You might be like, oh, he just finished nursing school. He just played a football, right. last football game. You know, he's retiring like Kelsey. Uh, he's top of mind. I, I In events, I have people write down corporate events so they can understand how words matter. OJ Simpson asked, was asked, you know, what was your relationship like with Nicole? And he said something along the lines of, we were a normal, you know, divorced couple. We had our downs and ups. <clears throat> what's wrong with downs and ups? Well, how do we normally say it? Ups and downs. Ups and downs. The order matters. So when the sure. order changes, sometimes in events, I remember one time I asked a man, you know, who did you name first? I say, everyone stand up if you named your oldest first. Hmm. And then we all look and then I go, now sit down. Everyone else stand up. And I hmm. go, everyone is standing up. Now I can pick people. And I go, who did you name? I named my youngest. And one person I say was at, at an IECP event, International Chiefs of Police event. Oh, oh really? Wow. As a chief. And I said, uh, who's your name? He goes, my youngest. I go, the favorite? He goes, no. He just was arrested two days ago and he's in jail right now. I go, oh, sorry, chief. Sorry. sorry. And he goes, no, 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 that's all right. Someone else, another man at an event, I said, uh, who did you name? He said, my middle. And I go, what's going on for your middle? And he goes, well, I'm the speaker after you, Janine. And my middle daughter just graduated from nursing school about 30 minutes ago. Oh. And I had to miss it because I was already scheduled to speak and I can't wait to call her. So I'm in here because I'm on stage next and then I'm going to give her a call. So wow. that's why she's top of mind. So our order that we say things that right. are words matters, right? Hmm. Right. That's true. Right. Let's dive in here. Let's look at this. I'm going to give you the answers. Okay. After this is reconnecting on Facebook. What I want us to look at are past tense and current tense. In this first clip, you're going to hear the following past tense words. Grab your, if you have a cell, if you're watching this on your computer, grab your cell phone. I'll give you a hot second and then take a picture with your cell phone. Or you could take a screenshot, screenshot with your computer, but you won't sure. have access to it. But if you take your cell phone, just grab a quick picture here. You'll know what to look for. And you can, mm -hmm. all, of course, you know, I don't know if you, they can rewatch this, but you can. Oh, they can rewatch it. Yeah, it'll be the newsletter. available. Right. All right. Good. So here in this is regarding how did they reconnect? Right. So mm -hmm. he had reached out all past tense. He mm -hmm. had reached out. He said, saw, was, then triggered, had passed, told, admired. These are all past tense. All right. Mm -hmm. How many current tense in this story? Zero. Other than when Karen repeats the dialogue between her and John, then it's current tense because she's telling the dialogue. Let's mm -hmm. watch it. Listen for the past tense. The couple first dated in their 20s and reconnected more than a decade later in the middle of the pandemic. So how did you meet up again? He had reached out to me on Facebook and he said, hey, blast from the past, how's things? And when I saw his picture, his profile picture was with several young children. And then it triggered my memory that his sister and his sister's husband had passed away. And uh, he told me, yeah, I have the kids now. I admired that. Um, I thought that was amazing. We'll talk about all those facial expressions tomorrow. Look at the past tense. He sure. had reached out. He said, saw, was, all right. How many seconds was this? Oh, there's another typo here. Not, uh, 22 seconds. In 22 seconds. I got to fix that. Oh. 22 seconds. All right. Current tense, none. Now let's look at the New Year's Eve story. Now, both these stories are stories of the past. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm trying to get her baseline on two stories where she has no reason to lie about these things. Right. You want to get your baseline of someone when they have no reason to be deceptive. For me, when I work for ATF, I would always talk about my bike. You know, I remember I was just, my kids want a bike, you know, my kids are learning mm -hmm. about biking. 
when I was a kid, I won a bike at a movie theater. It was a red, white, and blue Huffy with like a banana seat. It was so oh, cool. Nice. Remember the first bike you had as a kid? And that's how I, someone has no reason to lie, right? Do you remember the first bike you had, Sean? I do. It was what? a 26-inch Ross. Bought it on Columbia Road by my father. Columbia Road in uh, Dorchester. Rock All right. Street. See? Yeah. So remember, I, can, I, can remember the, I can remember the smell of the bikes. I don't know. How, how do you remember smells? I can remember the, how the bike shop smelt. Hey, by the way, in analytic interviewing, smell is stronger than a sight or hearing smell. Wow. When people can't remember something like witness interviews mm -hmm. and because it, it's so shocking, um, if you have them close their eyes and you bring them back and you talk about smells and have them tell me the first smell you smelled when you first woke up in the morning. It was coffee or a hot tea or right. I put gas in my truck. And you take someone through the journey of smells, they can mm -hmm. unlock information that they have blocked out. Amazing. So, so you're, you are not a freak of nature. You are a healthy, normal human being. Good. Good to know. <laughs> Some people might disagree in the chat, but who knows? <laughs> All right. Let's look at this. Now, this is the New Year's Eve story. Let me get the baseline here. Again, no reason for, for Karen Reed to lie here. Right. We're going to see it's 27 seconds long, 12 past tense, zero, zero um, current tense, other than when she's repeating dialogue. Mm-hmm. We had had an argument on- Oh, hold on, let me give you a teaser. So we had had an argument, we were away, he became drunk, I ended up, John didn't come back to our room, that was rough, I felt taken advantage of, he apologized, mm -hmm. and you can't, buddy, now let's listen for them all. <clears throat> we had had an argument on New Year's Eve, they were away on vacation, and he became incoherently drunk. And I ended up ringing in the new year with his niece and nephew. John didn't come back to our room till after 3 a.m. So that was rough. I felt very much taken, a, taken advantage of. He apologized profusely for what happened on New Year's Eve. And he said, if you can't get over it, then you need to spend some time in your house. I, I can't keep apologizing. I don't want to keep rehashing this. Hmm. Past tense, past tense, past tense. Sure. Right? We'll talk about her eye movements and where we go to gather information with eye movement. Past tense. Current tense only when she's talking about the dialogue where, where John's saying, like, if you can't get over this, you know, then you're going to have to go spend some time on your own. Hmm. Now let's look at the, the big story, right? The drop off at Albert's house party story. Here in a 14 second, keep in mind, edited by, you know, Nightline over at ABC. It's all hmm. TV shows too, right? Zero past tense words now. So now hmm. we have the opposite. So we have zero past tense words and nine current tense words. This stands out. If you are trained in statement analysis and you see this and you hear it, you're like, okay, she changed her baseline. This is also a past story. Well, can someone who is changing their baseline and telling a story in the reverse, she, she's telling a story from the past year and a half earlier in current tense, could they still be telling the truth? We'll explore if that is possible or not. Okay. Here's what we're looking for now and listening for. Uh, current tense, zero past tense here, zero. I pull, it's snowing. It's is for, it is, it is snowing, right? It is snowing. Right. Means I look right. Right now. John has no coat right now. He has no coat on. It's mm -hmm. windy. I drop him off, goes up the driveway, approaches the side door. I see him. I look down at my phone. Past tense would be what? I pulled up. It was snowing. John didn't have a coat on. It was windy. I dropped him off. He went up the driveway. You know, he approached the side door. I saw him do it. I saw him do it. And then I looked down at my phone. But we have current tense. Why? Why the change? Let's hmm. talk about it. So I pull at the foot of the driveway. It's snowing. John has no coat on. It's windy. So I drop him off. He goes up the driveway and approaches the side door. And as I see him approach the door, I look down at my phone. Okay. Let's listen to it again. Why the change? So I pull at the foot of the driveway. It's snowing. John has no coat on. It's windy. So I drop him off. He goes up the driveway and approaches the side door. And as I see him approach the door, I look down at my phone. All right. So what do we see though? We see the hand gestures are happening. Right. And they're happening a beat before she talks. Her Perfect. eye movements are consistent. She looks down left, which is internal dialogue, and down right, which is emotions. As a matter of fact, when she was talking about New Year's Eve, and it's not fair because she has the kids and John's off like hooking up with somebody else and doesn't come home to the middle of the morning, <laughs> you know, because he was drunk. 
And uh, she's talking about taking care of the kids. She looks down right. Down right is emotions. She's True. not looking up or right, creating an answer. So her body language, her eye movements, her facial expressions, her hand gestures, the timing of them is all still congruent here. The right. only thing that's a deviation in the baseline is this tense. Why tense. do you think it is? Do you think she could still be telling the truth and have that change in tense? Yes, I do. What, what I do you do. Do? want to take a guess at it? As to why? Yeah. Um, because, I, okay, there's a, there's a couple things if I was thinking about it. This is the point where she's been the most uh, criticized for, trashed about, because this is the moment where people are saying that she killed him. Yes. That, this is where she killed him. And it's like, if I, okay, so I'm looking at this. If it was any chance at all, she probably reads this every day for the past two years. Mm -hmm. They say he they say he didn't go in. Twelve people said he didn't go in. Yeah. Uh, I pulled the car up and I backed on him with six uh, 25 miles an hour, 62 feet. She's living this every day. Yeah. She's not yeah. living the other stories. Yes. OK, I love, I love that. All right. So, yeah, that yeah. True? I don't know. That's so. When people tell stories about things that happen, they're usually past tense. Why? Because it's it's past tense. It's in the right. past. But why? Why would someone use present tense? Here's the catch. Here's the catch. It's likely they're reliving a moment right there and then. Because right. the memory is so strong and clear, it mm. feels like it's happening all over again. Right. This could be the case with Karen Reed, especially because the night of the alleged crime likely was and still is a very traumatic for her. Sure. All right. Or sometimes we tell the story in the present tense to make it feel more urgent to the sure. listener. Like, you know, this is it. And if Reed wants people to understand her experience better, she might unconsciously switch to the present tense. And, and she probably doesn't even realize she switched to the present, the present tense. No. Did you know, did you notice between those three stories, the last one was in present tense? And the, I, the No, I never did. But for me, all I, all I could think of is that, let's face it, we're in the, we're in these chat rooms. She is being hammered constantly every day from the other side. And I think she lives that every day like it is present because they're not talking about uh, how they met. Yes. They're not talking about, they're not really talking about uh, the fight and the argument. But right. this thing is every day for two years, uh, right. Janine. It's alive. It has a heartbeat. It has a heartbeat, right? Right. Exactly. Well, now let's play devil's advocate because here's the catch 22. Changing tenses also could be a sign of making up a story. So some human behavior and detecting deception experts are probably going to come on right now and, and say, no, no, no. Everyone knows in law enforcement, you're trained. If the tense changes, then that's a hot spot, and it's likely she's telling a lie. But mm. you have to take into consideration that high, high level of stress. It's as if it's still happening. It might have been a couple of years ago, but right. for her, she's reliving it. I believe her. Right. I believe her, and I think she subconsciously did. She probably has no idea that she's changed the tense. No. And remember, she did four I statements here. One of the great ways people lie is to remove the I. I right. is ownership of what happened right. here. Right. And within those 14 seconds, I want you to count 14 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14. What bam. In 14 seconds, she has four I statements. Mm. This this is incredible. Her body language is still congruent. Her micro expressions are still congruent, congruent, and her hand gestures, the timing of them, and looking down at her phone, right. all congruent. Uh, despite this anomaly where she changed her baseline here, I still believe she's telling the truth. And mm -hmm. I think this is a good reminder that understanding human behavior and language can be tricky and it requires compassion, right? This mm -hmm. is careful. Sure. Compassion. All right, next. So, by the way, I'm a so person. We said this earlier in, in your in your segment here. Yeah. But after we do so, if, if there's some questions, I don't know if you see the questions. I see the questions. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll see the questions. Um, if you, on your um, on your screen at the side, if yeah. you hit comments, from go from private to uh, live, at the top of your screen, you see anything that says comments? Um, over over on the side panel, do you see anything on the side panel up top that says comments? I don't. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. Yes. And you can quit, go from private to live. And you should see a bunch of uh, oh, people. Oh, wow, I see a whole bunch. There you oh, go. And that's where the questions will be at. Close. Oh, my goodness. You do a lot right. better reading those questions than me. All right. Uh... <laughs> no, we'll, what we'll do is as we get towards the end of your presentation, we can have them put a cue and then there'll be a question. 
and I can probably I can probably star them. As you as you're answering the question, I'll star the, the next questions coming up, and I'll have them okay. in a little box for you. Yeah, because I think we got so far beyond. Because if people had questions, then I, I like right here. There's someone saying liar. Well, who do they think's a liar? Is it OJ Simpson? Because that was the OJ time. Are you all um, the way down at the bottom? No, I I, cl I called I climbed way up. Oh my god! Yeah, tech support. <laughs> Well, thank you, everybody, for your comments and your time. I know you could be doing a million other things tonight. Yeah. How would you analyze Charlie Manson? You know, when you when you talk about a psychopath or sociopath, believe it or not, many people will tell you, like therapists and sociologists and psychologists will tell you that you can't analyze them. But here's the deal. I think that you can because word choice, they might not, they don't feel remorse. So you're not going to see like micro expressions of sadness hiding out in there. Do you, do you see the question at oh, the yeah, bottom? That's cool. Did you, you see that? that? Yeah. Look at that. Did you do that? I did that for you. I can oh, do yeah. it. I'll do it all for you. All right, cool. Thank you. Look, Christina King. First of all, I'm sorry, Christina. You lost your fiance in a motorcycle accident. It took her a long time to talk about him in the past tense. Look, so she's we have a testimony right there. Right, um, right? You can you can listen to the words people use and they don't realize that they're lying. If you that's why I love statement analysis. All right, can she analyze anyone else in this case? Well, I need footage, right? So I need footage. So I would love, you know, get me, get me. Where's Brian Albert? Let's get him on uh, doing some live interviews. Well, in yeah, he was, uh, he was never curious. He was the only cop that was never curious in his life because he just let everyone stroll over his yard, right? Yeah. Dead body, a Boston cop that he knew that was in his house, but he wasn't curious at all. N nothing was curious to him. I mean, yeah. you know, this cops are curious by nature, right? Yes. Well, like old lady, I, you know, not not to, you know, I know it's wokeism, but Listen, I grew up. My mother would always say, like old ladies, cops are the worst. Tell me if this is true, Sean. Was Brian Albert with the ATF agent that was also in the house that night? Were they in New York City earlier that day at a cop's funeral? Isn't that, that amazing? Brian amazing. Albert didn't even know. Didn't he even was know. They went to a funeral. For a, a, a New York police officer that day, and the next day he's got a, a dead cop in his uh, on his uh, lawn. And he doesn't come out. Why does he come out? Because he got bloody knuckles, right? He, it's, no, it's, 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 it's it's this whole thing is um, disheartening because I think that you know at the end of the day, there's a, a dead young man in his forties that right. Aaron Reed said is the patron saint of Canton. You know, like right. it was a was a good guy. You know, it, it's it's devastating to me. Um, that it could get this far for, for Karen Reed. Like it, it's, it's right. absolutely, devastating. when does she get time to grieve? Exactly. When does she get time right. to grieve? Her, her, her freedom's on the line. It's, it's, right. it's, it's disgusting to me. Um, I see a lot of people are asking uh, different questions here, but I'm going to, I'll dive back in and. Oh sure, yeah. Well, uh, I'll, like I said, as you're asking, yeah. uh, answering the questions, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll put them up as they go. Uh, someone asked, a couple people have asked if I heard the 911 call. Yes, yeah, have you? I did. Yeah, I he think did. I analyzed that for Sports TV actually, the wow. other day. Um, could could you comment on that? Yeah, of course. Well, yeah. I think you don't have to be a body language expert to know <laughs> that's messed up. You know, you hear, I mean, you hear, that's, look, you know, go on TikTok and listen to 911 calls of like people who committed the crimes. Right. What's his name? Kavanaugh and the Carolinas there. Also another yeah. family of power. I thought they were untouchable, just like we see over right. there in camp. Uh, that 911 call, you hear Karen Reed freaking out, yeah, crying, freaking out, right? right. Like, why? Right. What's up with McCabe? Jennifer McCabe, right? Was she the one that made the phone call? Was it her? Was it Jennifer McCabe? That was her. That was her. She's like, like it's almost like it's an inconvenience. What do you what do you say to the people who say, oh, some people handle stress differently. Some people like she's a mother and she uh, you yeah. listen. Here's how many times did she see a dead body in her life? Listen, I go to my attic <laughs> and I have my mouse traps and I go to my attic and I see and I'm a brave person. I think I worked for ATF <laughs> for several years. I've seen some pretty gross stuff. Right. And there's a dead mouse up there. Right. The mouse trap thing. And I'm like. I, my boyfriend's my boyfriend's uh, stepmother goes. You can pour oil olive oil on it and let it go. I'm like, olive. I, you no, know, I'm sending a message to all the other mice. My house is not a party house anymore. Right. Like, you come in, you're going out in a right. box. Right. This whole nine one one call to me 
is uh, it's unbelievable. You right. do not have to be a body language expert. I mean, come, I don't care that McCabe is connected to law enforcement and and she is a mother. That's bullshit. You have a dead body. You're looking at, listen, my mother died of cancer and mm. I was in the room with her mm. when she took her last breath. Right. And I got to tell you, it's not only sad, right. it's scary. It is. It's scary. Yeah. I remember I just, when the funeral parlor came and they were like taking my mother out of the house, like you know. seeing her body move, yeah. like yeah. just seeing her body move was like, that's what that held me, that held my hands, that gave me hugs. Like sure. I, I happen to be a swearing Christian. So I think that there's an afterlife, but that's my mother's body that, that was connected. With right me. there. Right. And I it, just went through it. My own father in November, right there. Like, just like you said, I said to myself, God almighty. Yeah. How did this happen? But you know, so, you know, what's funny, Jen, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry for your loss. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You too. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, seriously. But Jen knew this guy for 10 years. Jen was the one who was responsible for inviting John, John, maybe not so much Karen, to the party. That's why Karen was asking, hey, I didn't see an invite extended to me, right? As a matter of fact, uh, there's talk that probably John did not know Brian Albert much. Maybe I, I think there was comments saying he just probably met him for the first time a week before his death. So it was Jen McCabe that was the ringmaster for this thing. And she says, after knowing this kid for 10, knowing the kid, knowing the, uh, John for 10 years, and what Mrs. O, uh, McCabe would, uh, Mrs. Uh, O'Keefe would say, there's a man down on the snow, right? I mean, that's what she said for knowing. Now, first of all, knowing a guy for 10 years, seeing the condition he was in, you tell me that's normal? I, listen, my father took a fall here before he went to the nursing home. They, I was like, holy, I, I got on 911. My wife goes, what's wrong with you? You've been a cop forever. I said, hey, I'm emotional. I mm -hmm. want to get this guy help. Mm -hmm. you, can't, listen, you can't hide that. That, you know, what bad acting, by the way. Oh, God, yeah. You know why? Because if it was premeditated, she might have had a better, you know, better response. But all she's thinking about, and I said this the other day in Court TV, and I'll say it here for people who may not have saw it, is that because Jen McCabe is connected to law enforcement, mm -hmm. right? It's family of law enforcement, but a lot of power. She has a power. She has a position of power in Canton, right? Sure. When yeah. we have a position of power, when we lie, we focus on the rewards, not the consequences. The everyday liar focuses on the consequences. So now yeah. we've got what Jim McCabe focusing on the rewards. Well, what you might say, Janine, what's the reward? The reward is not having her family and herself go to jail right. for a killing a guy and b trying to cover it up and right. and spoiling an investigation. Right? right? Everyone could go to jail and, and hopefully they do. And so then, guess what happens? You have an increase in positive emotions. If you have a powerful person, you have an increase in positive emotions. That's why when your boss, you you said the F-bomb at work, right? Right. You know, unfortunately, you say it all the time. Many you times. Say, you say that bomb at work and your boss calls you in. You know you're going to get in trouble because you said that bomb to a client. Mm -hmm. You already know you're going to be in trouble. And you go in because you're in a position of power. You've been there 30 years. You go, yeah, what's up? What's up, Diana? What's up? Overly friendly. Sure. And Diana's like, you know damn right well what's up, driver. <laughs> Dropped an F-bomb to a client. You're right, which I do. Right. So, right? You come you're overly happy. And right. you have an increase in cognitive thinking. When one idea doesn't work, you come up with another idea. Sure. And I'll prove it to you. If your kids are in the room, which they shouldn't be because they're about this case, I'm going to tell everyone something now. <laughs> you have been a powerful liar. You've been a powerful liar. Here's where you've been a powerful liar. If you tell your kids there's a Santa Claus and an Easter Bunny, I have two littles upstairs. Mm. You tell them there's Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, Tooth Fairy, whatever. Guess what happens? You, they say, we can't go to Graham and Poppy's. They don't have a fireplace. Right. You're not going to get in. You make up, a, you slap on a smile. You focus on the rewards. You're not like, oh, I hope they don't trust me because I'm lying on them right now. You focus on the rewards. Sure. You slap on a smile and you come up with an answer. Sure. And when they don't believe that answer, you come up with another one, another one, right. another one. And then eventually right. you say, don't tell Graham and Poppy, but I'm going to leave the back door unlocked. <laughs> and then I'll leave a note yeah, for was... Santa to lock the door when he leaves. Right. right. Then your kid believes you, and then you call your friend. You're like, I came up with six answers today. Sure. That's the, true. Uh, right? So I want you to think. Powerful people. Casey Anthony, same thing. Casey Anthony, her power, she was pretty. I think if Casey Anthony was 300 pounds, had two teeth hanging on, she'd be in jail today for killing her kid. Of course. 
But she's pretty. Well, yeah, there she was. I don't know if she's there. Well, so, and the other thing about this case, all these true crime uh, series on TV, what do they always start off with? They start out with the 9-11 call, right? Yes. This case have yet to officially release the official. That was a voicemail that Karen left uh, on her. It was on John's phone. She called him at the moment she saw John on the lawn. She dropped the phone. She dropped the phone in the back seat of the car. Four minutes recorded this whole activity. Oh, I didn't know. Isn't that, that amazing? Well, here's the other thing. They have never officially played Jen's direct line call to the Canton police. So you don't get to hear what the cop's saying to, to Jen. All you're hearing is this four-minute recording. It was a voicemail to John's phone. Thank God that exists. That's, That's amazing. That's a God shot right there. That's a God shot. Someone's saying that someone has dirt on someone. Here's the deal. And, and, and we used to say this in ATF all the time. This happened. I'm, I'm going to stop sharing for a hot second, then we'll go back in there. This happened at ATF with the whole Waco, Texas debacle. The two people that were on the ground running the ATF, um, Waco, Texas, the Branch Davidians, those two people ultimately lied all the way up to Janet Reno and uh, said that we didn't lose the element of surprise, but ATF had actually lost the element of surprise. I don't want to go into all the logistics of that, but what sure. I want to say is that um, when someone is, hold on, what were we just saying? I just lost my train of thought. What did someone say? Someone said, um, what did they say? It reminded me to tell that story. About um, Brian Albert? It was something about Brian Albert? I don't know. All right, I'm going to think about it. Uh, and someone, oh, I know. Someone said, the two people on the ground lost their jobs. They got fired. They sued ATF. And guess what? They get their jobs back. They don't become special agents, but they're working in the wow. science department in ATF. Everyone in ATF said the same thing. They knew where the bodies were buried. Right. We, when you are in law enforcement, <laughs> especially, and you yeah. know someone else's dirt, they use their skeletons in the closet to, to the soccer practice. Yeah, sure. I, I took my kids to soccer last, last, last summer. And some cop is, is showing up with his wife and three kids in the cruiser. And I'm like, the, the arrogance this day and age with cell sure. phones and cover, you can't right. do that. You can't, can't do, do that. that. No. You just can't do it. So it, when someone gets away with something, you, they know where the bodies are buried. Why sure. do you think there's so many people in a house and no one's talking really? You know? Right. People exactly. Yeah. All right. Let's go back in. Let's go back All in. All right. Did what? you did you knock it down? I think you I think you took it off. I did. I did. I, took, I did it on purpose just to Oh, that's fine. No, I could have I could have changed the thing up. Well, let me see. Oh, look at you. I could have. Um, All right, let's let's go back in here. I'm gonna you can do it. Present the whole. Yeah. Well, you here we go. All right. Beautiful. Here we go. Look at I'm I'm learning. I'm fancy too. This the is word, so I happen to say Look so. That. There you go. Uh, I even say so in newsletters. So the reason this matters. So I, it's part of my baseline. Right. So, so I just said so. So before we jump into sure. stuff, uh, let's talk about its significance. Uh, on ABC's Nightline interview footage and NBC's Today show that aired, we hear Karen Reed use the word so three times. Once at the end of her story about New Year's Eve and how rough it was for her. And two times when she tells us about John arriving at Brian Albert's house, right? Right. So let's watch this. See, I just said so. It's just, it's part of my baseline. Yeah. I, mean, I right. really need to get rid right. of it. It's, it's, it's a verbal filler. So... I pull at the foot of the driveway. It's snowing. John has no coat on. It's windy. So I drop him off, he pulls up the driveway, and approaches the side door. And as I did, you hear the second so? So it starts. I, so. I, I didn't hear that. No. Listen to the second so. It's windy. So I drop him off. He right. So. Windy. So I drop him off. D. So I drop him off. D. Mm -hmm. So I drop him off. D. So I drop him off. He goes up the driveway and approaches. All right. So and then we have the so at the beginning. Right. So I pull at the foot of the drive. So I pull at the. All right. Now let's talk about it. Okay. All right. When deciphering words with statement analysis, we need to pay particular attention to how sentences are started. Like obviously, obviously, it's overselling something. Google people convey large try to convince. Karen right. Reed begins her account of what happened once she got to that the after house party, Albert's. Uh, and she starts with the so and then adds another so. Here are the different reasons why people might say so. And I'm going to tell you what I think. And then I, I'm curious what you think, Sean, and you okay. at home, uh, if you want to share your comments as well. Sure. 
Um, we say so because it's casual or informal tone. Uh, um, this is where someone just simply says no, like me. And so anyway, this is what happened. Uh, I do not think this applies to Karen Reed because her baseline does not include numerous so's. If you look at this interview from you and me today, Sean, I, I probably have 55 so's already in here. Me it, too. I, I do that. It's a verbal so, filler. It's not I, a speaking technique. but it's, Yeah, it's more of a, a connector, like a filler. Yes. Right. I don't think that, that I did a tongue protrusion. And that's so funny because I'm saying it's not good. I need to work on it. And then maybe we'll talk about this wiping of the lips later with my tongue. It's so funny. Oh, yeah. When you're a body language expert, you, you don't just analyze other people. You're analyzing yourself all the time. Right. It's 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 like that movie where uh, Jim Carrey became God. And all of a sudden, all the prayers start coming in on him. And then he turns them into sticky notes. Bruce Almighty. And then he turns them into sticky notes. And then eventually he figures out to get emails. From all the <laughs> prayers. It's too much. Too many prayers. It is. But the next reason people say so is defensiveness or justification. In hmm. some contexts, beginning a sentence with so could signal defensiveness or attempt to justify an action or decision. All right. This is a potential option for why Karen Reed starts this part of the interview with the word so. Hmm. Uh, Reed finishes telling us that story about how are we really welcomed at this party and then she arrives at the house. However, here's the deal. And by the way, I say here in the newsletter, there's several missing minutes of her story. Like, I want to know what did they talk about in the SUV? Did they argue? What did they argue about? There's a million questions. You know, during that drive, I want to know. All, I, I have lots of questions. I want to. One day, I'm going to interview Karen. Maybe it's good. Like, great. Maybe you can yeah. do it here. Maybe you can do it here. That'd yeah, that would be great. That would be great. Maybe, maybe the three of us write a book together. Ooh, All right. Don't say that. Jesus. <laughs> I'm, already, I'm already writing five books. That's funny. According, to, according to the trolls. Oh, he's not writing books. He's writing oh, all kinds of books. He's writing yeah. books. You're writing books now. Let's yeah. write a book. I, I don't uh, even read a book. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but keep in mind, TV interviews are being edited, so we don't know how many shows she actually has because right. they could be editing up. But I don't think that that's even part of her baseline the way it is mine. I think it's this third one. Transition or preparation. Starting right. with so can indicate a transition of thought. Sure. That's when I use it, and yeah. it's also part of my baseline. It can serve as a verbal cue that the speaker is organizing their thoughts and, and attempting to go into a next response. I think this is most likely why Karen Reed uses it here. It, it's She's using it, in my expert opinion, as a transition. Right. There's also evasion. So at the beginning of the response, might be used to buy time as someone is formulating sure. their answer. Searching. There's right. the deal. That so sounds like this. So... Then I went to the grocery store, but we don't have that with Karen. What does she do? No. The cadence is remaining the same. So I, I right. we pull up. I do this. I do this. And and so it, it's it's staying in her cadence. There's no long so in a pause. I right. don't think that she's trying to come up with an answer here. I think she's telling us the truth. Would you agree? Right. Absolutely. No, because it's quick. It's really quick. She's not... Yes. Taking a mile to take the soul and she's thinking, well, how can I, what can I say? She yes. doesn't do it here. It's right there. She comes it's right, right at you. It's right there. And, and everything's right. going At Many people in my world will look at that and say, that's a hot spot. So now you've got the change in tense happening. So we've got one hot spot. Now you've mm -hmm. got her saying, so we've got another hot spot. Once you get three hot spots, the likelihood someone's lying goes up. So, so this is what I'm saying. You got to look for the truth. Sure. The, the, the lie will pop out if you're so if you are busy looking at the truth, the lie will pop out. It's like one of those things where you see on Facebook or something, you see a bunch of rocks and you're looking at the rocks. If you look long enough, you'll see the message written in the rocks. Oh. But if you go to look for the message in the rocks, you, you can't find it. it. Like, I can't right. find it. I can't find it. I can't. Where's the message? I don't see it. That's a good point. You know, wow. you want to take a step back, look for the truth. And then the, the lie will pop out. So right. here's devil's advocate. Uh, narrative construction. So statement analysis considers that the use of so might indicate an attempt to construct the narrative or story that can signal that the speaker is about to give a reasoned account of the events. And it's more about creating a possible story. Again, this is another one where you would have those long so and their eyes will move in different directions. Their sure. body, sometimes they might stop breathing. Sometimes when people right. lie, they literally stop breathing or they stop moving their body. Karen Reed, I don't know her, authentic. Her body's moving. We have what's called movement DNA. And this, this we'll have to talk about this more in detail, if not tonight, another time. But sure. her movement DNA, we, it's called PGM, posture, gesture, merger. Sometimes hmm. people um, sit really straight and they'll use hand gestures as they're talking. But it comes across as fake. 
a woman ran for president a couple of years ago, Carly Fiorina, I think oh, yeah. like that. She's a Republican. I saw her. I, I hate politics. I'm a political idiot. I, I saw her. I go, oh, I would never want her to be my president or my boss or my mother or a friend. She just came right. across as so stiff. And right. then I think up and everyone's like, oh, yeah, she was really difficult to work with. She was really stiff. She, you know, she wanted you to the line, like just so inauthentic. Sure. Authenticity, like you have and I have, our body moves. And when our hand gestures move, posture, gesture, merger. When I, my posture is changing side to side, forward, my hand gestures, my whole thing just feels, you can feel when someone's telling the truth. Do you remember um, Marion Jones, the track star? She cheated and took steroids and she came out. This is, I'm dating myself now, but she said she didn't take steroids. She didn't cheat. <laughs> and the first time she said it, I watched it and for seconds I go, she's lying. I didn't even have to analyze that for more than five seconds. I did. I analyzed it for an hour after, but I'm like lying right out of the gate. You, you feel it. Like you can feel the frustration of Karen Reed. You can feel, and, and she is not backing down. I mean, she is just a no, force. She's a fighter. She truly is a fighter. I, I say that in the newsletter. I she persists against difficult odds. When the going gets tough, she gets tougher. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Trust me. Yeah. No doubt about that. She is a warrior. She really is. All right. Behind the bottle. Now, this is this is the drinking. This is where I think she's not being forthright. And, and you and I talked a, a little bit about this right. the other day. Um, I think she's getting hammered over there in Canton and, and in Massachusetts and, and maybe even, you know, the the uh, the trolls online about her drinking. And she is. Um, I think she knows Clearly. damn right well she had more than four. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why I think that. I'm going to show it to you. Okay. Um, four is a low enough number. I call my sister, Kerry, and I go, how many kids do you have? She was four. She didn't say about four. Four is a low enough number to count. You know. Sure. You know, I had, yeah, maybe if you're getting up to eight, you might say, oh, I don't know. I had about five or six. And really, it might be eight or nine, right? But about four mm, doesn't work. It, it, you would know if it's four. And sure. when she gets called out on it here on ABC, she doesn't say, no, the bar's lying. No, it was either four. I know no more than five. It mm -hmm. might have been five, but no, there was no way I had nine, eight or nine. Right. Right. Uh, she doesn't do that. She's, she, instead, she pivots and she says something like, well, I don't think they're saying I'm out of my mind. Something like that. I was like, oh, look at her. She just gave up on that. She's like, all right. Yeah. The, the reason why people use squishy language is mm. to not be held to the coal on on their statements. Right. And I think this is where she's not being forthright. And I think someone can lie and right. still be telling the truth about a murder. Right. Now, can I ask you a question? Yeah. <clears throat> so <clears throat> she's answer, she's being asked a question. She's been charged with OUI or DUI. Yes. Right? Could she be kind of uh, in her own mind saying, oh, Jesus, I'm going to give up. I'm going to give them evidence against me. You know, I mean, listen, I, I get it. But could that be in the back of her? Clearly, she's getting hammered for two years about she was shattered, shit faced, whatever you want to say, yes. you know. But the funny thing about that is, you know, she had no problem driving to and back to uh, her residence. She had to take that big tank SUV and maneuver it into a garage, right? So she had to go in and turn. According to the state police, no accidents. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if she's a big drinker. I used to be a big drinker. I'm not a drinker anymore. But it's me neither. Gone. Uh, but she's 100 pounds soaking wet. If yeah, she had sure. 9, 10, 15 w cocktails, she'd be, she would be comatose. Well, and it know. depends on how they're making the cocktails. True. Why, true. Is, wasn't right. it like a vodka drink? It was something like a, a vodka juice or something? I think vodka and soda, maybe. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, there's something. Know? It depends on how the bartender's making it. They could be sure. making it lighter because sure. they see she's drinking. I mean, I saw on Core TV, they were saying that the, the bar has the ability to determine exactly how many drinks she had so they can stop so, right. someone from drinking too many. In the state of Massachusetts, some of these bars, and I think this waterfall does, they monitor, they have it somehow connected, I forgot, I heard about it, to the credit card and the video. What if she buys a round? That doesn't mean she's buying nine drinks for herself. She buy, buy a round, listen, she was trying to fit in. She wasn't part of the group. Yeah, but I think mm -hmm. that she bought the drinks for herself. And this is why I say that, because she didn't contradict it. Like, did right. she, this is the opportunity for her to say, yeah, okay, I, I might have bought nine, but I drank about four, and right. I, I was packing drinks for everybody that night. Yeah. She didn't say right. that. She had her opportunity to say it. She didn't say it. She just instead said she pivoted right. 
and said, well, I don't think they said I was out of my mind. If she's right. a big drinker, I don't know if she is. If she's a big drinker, it depends on how they made the drink. And she might right. be able to take it. She oh, might be able to have that yeah. amount. And maybe the last five drinks came in the last hour and a half, two hours. Like, who knows? Maybe exactly. Didn't drink. take effect. Yeah, we don't know. Maybe that's you know, maybe she was more drunk when she woke up in the morning than she exactly. was. Exactly. We don't know that. We don't know. Right. That. It's all I know people who are big drinkers that can knock it back. Right. So who knows? There's a lot. I think there's a lot uh, ambiguity there. Let's right. go into this statement, though. Okay. Because she, this is something liars do. And be careful if you're lying. They they do a preemptive no. Wait till someone, for the love of God, finishes asking your question. Uh, my sister, one of my sisters, my youngest sister, Kayleen, her husband, Mike, I don't know if he's listening. If Kayleen's asking Mike a question and he answers no before she's done asking the question, she already knows he's not being truthful. <laughs> so when you went to Cornhole yesterday was no, no, no one was there. No. Right. My sister's like, okay, now I know the person that I was going to ask. I didn't even say their name. Now I know that person's there. Right. Because you know the question's coming. And so you get to, you preempt that no. Right. This is this is a hot spot though with deception. Wait till someone asks the question, finishing ask the question, then answer. So, have you ever noticed someone saying no before the question's fully articulated? Uh, my brother-in-law though says no. Why? That's his. It's that's his mo. No, why? Right, right. Hey, yesterday yeah. when you were when you ran down to the grocery store was no why? She's like, I didn't even right. finish asking you my question. Right. You know, did you use the credit card? Did you do whatever it was? Right. right? Yeah. So let's listen to Karen Reed here. <clears throat> right. The question before it's being asked. We were happy, having fun, laughing, uh, just very normal. Did you ever feel you were overserved that night? As no, I say? no. You hear it? We were yeah. overserved that night. As no. I say, overserved right. that night. As no. I say, served that night. As no. I say, no. Served that night. As no. I say, hmm. look at this face. So yeah. in tomorrow's newsletter, I'm going to talk about this face, mm. right? So there's a lot happening here. Um, this kissy face here is, uh, it could be a bunch of different things. We see sadness in the chin. So sure. this is sadness here. Now she could be sad because everyone's saying she's a big drinker or that she might go to jail for DWI, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. We don't know what the sadness is, but this, this lip protrusion right here that's happening, Kobe Bryant mm -hmm. used to do this going up and down the court. Mm -hmm. And this lip protrusion is, um, I should have did something different. I need to do something different moving forward. Um, so Kobe Bryant surpasses the ball when he was, you know, God rest his soul. And mm. someone stole it or the basket didn't go in. You would see him running down the court. If you're in a meeting or on a date and you see someone doing this with their with their lips, they're thinking mm -hmm. of an alternative. They're thinking sure. of an alternative. What can I do differently? This is, it should just be a flat out, no. Yeah, right. Maybe she tells us, I did not kill John O'Keefe without right. any of this pouting of the lips. That's what we right. should see here, but we don't. This is where I think, in fact, uh, she's not being forthright. I think she's you know, lying here. No. Okay. okay. That's one. That's the Today Show. That's one of the NBC's Today right. Show. Now let's go over here. Another indicator is when people say the same answer more than once, more than once. We heard this with Amber Heard. Oh, my gosh. The Johnny Depp trial. Amber Heard says, you know, she punched him on the stairs after he threw something at, at her sister and was going to punch her sister or throw her sister on the stairs. And she goes, I walloped him. And it was the only time. It's the only time I ever landed one. It's the only time I ever landed one. <laughs> I never landed one before. I always tried, but I never landed one. It was the only time. I mean, literally, I think she says it 16 times. Wow. Truthful people expect to be believed. They convey information liars try to convince. So here's this repeated response uh, that we hear on ABC's Nightline. All right. Probably mm -hmm. four. Let's okay. See. When you walked out of the bar, how many drinks had you had? I had had probably about four. The Commonwealth says that you had nine drinks that night. That's what the prosecution says. I, I don't believe they're saying I wasn't in my right mind. I well, they're saying you were intoxicated. Oh, stand by. The, where where they're repeating is here, where she says no twice. This is where she repeats no twice. Ready? Let's watch this. Sorry, when they were we were happy, having fun, laughing, uh, just very normal. Did you ever feel you were overserved that night? As no. I say, no, no, no. That's yeah. where she repeats it twice. All right, that's where she repeats it twice. Here, over here, we're back on ABC's Nightline. Here, uh, she hesitates, and, and she does not hesitate. She's not a pauser, and then says that probably about four, and later confronted with the claims of having nine drinks, 
then what does she do? She she pivots, but doesn't say, no, 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 I bought some for some other people. Right. Say probably or about, it allows for amb ambiguity and it's a tool used by people who want to obscure the truth mm -hmm. and they're in denial about mm -hmm. the truth. I, right. I still believe her. I still believe her. Somewhere sure. I had, oh crap, I think I might have deleted it. I had a whole bunch of words. Oh, right here. Here they Squishy are. words, yeah. These squishy words right here. Look at this. About, kind of, it felt like, I thought, it looked like, it was like, tried, basically, usually, typically, allegedly, technically. All these squishy words mm -hmm. is someone's intent to not be committal, right? right. So they'll, they'll come across as vague. And I'll show you. I brought Amber Heard to show you in that clip. Let's watch this again, though, and listen closely. It's so <clears throat> easy to when you walked out of the bar, how many drinks had you had? I had had probably about four. The Commonwealth says that you had nine drinks that night. That's what the prosecution says. I, I don't believe they're saying I wasn't in my right mind. I well, they're saying you were intoxicated. But I just caught I just caught something there at yeah, the end. Uh, yeah. She opened up her legs, which means she's not hiding anything. Oh my gosh. So well I just saw on. that. I just saw it at the end. I'm talking about this in my newsletter tomorrow. No, no, no. Watch what happens. Look closer. Wait. She, that's They're what I, I wasn't in my be, right mind. I well, they were saying you were intoxicated. When you walked no. out of the bar, how many watch drinks yourself. had you had? I well, they were saying you were intoxicated. When you walked out of the bar, how many drinks well, they were saying you were intoxicated? Boom. But what she's doing here, Sean, is is she's not opening her legs. She's uh -huh. actually pulling her right leg under her chair. Oh, and okay. we see this a lot when you're interviewing someone in law enforcement. They'll be forthright. Their legs are out front. I'm being forthright. Sure. And all of a sudden, it gets in a difficult situation. Okay. They'll they retreat. You know, I always say it's like uh, a far side cartoon, right? They become smaller and like point to the okay. other bear. And they right. put a bullseye on that bear, like shoot that bear, not me. Hmm. So what you're seeing, it looks like she's opening her legs, but she's adjusting in her seat, which we'll talk, I'm going to talk about in my newsletter tomorrow's newsletter, which okay. I haven't written yet. But oh that right foot, I'll play it again. That right foot comes back. Right. He's retreating. And it's the only time we see it. However, again, they don't show us full body pictures throughout the interview. So we're sure. missing. She could have done that a hundred times. We don't know. Right. Okay. This is, it, you know, drinking and driving is terrible, especially this day and age with, with Uber and, and Lyft and all that sure. jazz. Uh, it's That's not great. But in comparison to murder, it's a big mm -hmm. deal. I mean, it's not a big deal. I, uh, I did have a question too, right? So <clears throat> John's a, a veteran police officer, right? Yeah. Why, if he, if he thought she was that drunk, yeah. why would he let her drive? Well, because he was probably drunk too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He's probably drunk and, and drunk people do stupid things. You know, that's why you Uber before you go there. Cause you know, you're right. going to be thinking it up. Sure. Uh, my ex-husband's in politics and he's not a big drinker, but anytime he does like a political event in DC, I live outside of DC, he always Ubers in. Sure. Just in case he happens to have a couple because you never know. And and he's not even a big drinker. Even then he might have two or three. Sure. And it just is all about safety. My uh, my neighbor in my college dormitory, her dad was killed by a drunk driver. <clears throat> yeah, it, that's it's, it's a big deal. And if you're looking at it, uh, Karen Reed, where she's going to tell the truth and lie. If if this is the only place that she's lying, then I think that she can, you know, she can live with that. If if it comes out in court that, you know, she's found guilty of drinking and driving, <clears throat> the murder. All right, let's go. Let's go over here. We have another hot spot in this area in the same topic. Um, where is it? Uh, oh yeah, we did both. So we did both. We did the one where she's answering the question before it's asked, and then we just did. Where she pivots. Oh, there's one more thing I want to talk about. When you walked out of the bar, how many drinks had you had? I had had probably about two. She's using two squishy words here. Probably about. So mm -hmm. she say I had about four, or I probably had four, but she's using two squishy words. Probably about. Right. Four. The but, Commonwealth. But, but don't we so, always don't we always diminish? I mean, I was a cop, right? Traffic stop. Why don't you have two? That well, was we day two, a couple, and, yeah. and unless you say how many hours ago, and they'll say three. Yeah. When's the, when's the last time you had your last drink? Three, three hours right. ago. Right. Yeah. But two, you know, is the number one answer when pulled over by a cop for drinking? How many have you had? A couple. Two. Yeah, a couple. Two. Yeah, right, a couple. Two. But uh, you remember the old um, forms you had to fill out 
you know, for the for the shrinks in the, in the federal government. Yes. On average, how much do you drink a week? Yeah. No, no one tells the truth. No, no one tells the truth. Even no. when people come clean, they still, I, and this is my experience across the board, even when someone's coming clean, they still leave 10% back. Oh, of course. You think someone's told you the truth about everything? Listen, you 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 know maybe if you're, <laughs> you're good at it, maybe no. 90%, but you don't know. You had nine drinks that night. That's what the prosecution says. I, 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 so she stutters here a little. Also something we don't see her do anywhere else. Mm -hmm. I, I don't believe they're saying I wasn't in my right mind. I want to explore this. So I didn't even talk about this in my newsletter, but I should have, uh, which is in statement analysis, Sean, and you at home, you can take off words at the beginning of a sentence and at the end, but we can't change the sentence in the middle, right? So you can take off, you can take off words at the beginning and at the end. The okay. truth is in there. And if you look at this, like look at the Jean Benet Ramsey case. Jean mm -hmm. Benet Ramsey, the mother said, um, uh, I know you think something along the lines, I know you think I killed my child. So let's take off, I know you think. What's the statement? I killed my child. Now I'm not okay. saying that she did. Right. I don't want to get sued by the father, the ex-husband, or the sure. husband. She, she's passed. Paying attention. If you have if you're dating someone, what let's play a game, Sean. Wanna play a game with me? Sure. So here's the game. Here's the game. If you and I are uh, meet each other, and you know, I know you have a beautiful, awesome wife, but in another lifetime, we another meet life, each other. Of course. Yeah. And I say to you, I'm going to give you two scenarios. Which one should you be more concerned that I'm a cheater? And you at home, weigh in on your yeah. Facebook or wherever you're watching, LinkedIn, Twitter, wherever you're watching us, weigh in. What do you think? A or B? Who should you be more concerned with? They're both, by the way, both suspicious. All right. A. A is, um, I know you think I'm the kind of person who would cheat on you, but I'm not. Okay. I know you think I'm the kind of person who would cheat on you, but I'm not. All right. Step number, person number two, just to let you know, I'm not the kind of person who would cheat on you. <laughs> to let you know, I'm not the kind of person who would cheat on you. Both have <laughs> hot spots. Both have hot spots. Which one should you be more concerned with? A, let's give people some ch a chance to weigh in. Yeah. So A, A is, um, I know you think I'm the kind of person who would cheat on you, but I'm not. Right. And B is, uh, just to let you know, I'm not the kind of person who would cheat on you. I would say A. I would say A. You would say A. So I've got some Bs coming in. I've got yeah. some some A's, some Bs coming in. All right. Uh, wow, it's like 50-50 here. Both, right. both, both are suspicious. This would just naturally come up, like someone saying, why would you have it? Say Sean said to me, we're on a date, and he goes, oh, my ex-girlfriend cheated on me. Right. I'm now going to insert, well, just to let you know, I'm not the kind of person who would cheat on you. Right. Or I'm going to say, I, listen, I know you think everyone's the kind, you know, you, you may think I'm the kind of person who would cheat on you, but I'm not. Right. You're All kind right. of giving yourself up there. They're, they're, right. The worst is A. So the people right. said A, Sean, you're right. And here's why. In statement analysis, you can take words, as I said, off the beginning and at the end. And the truth is in the middle. So I can take off. I know you think. Throw it away. I'm the kind of person who would cheat on you. Jeez. But I'm not. So I can take off. But I'm not. And right. I know you think. And what bam, as my oldest son would say in the middle, is I am the kind of person who would cheat on you. Wow. Story number two, also suspicious because I'm saying just to let you know, that's un unnecessary language. Just to let you know. Five unnecessary words. Just say it. If someone says to you, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Six unnecessary words. Someone says, can I ask you a question? I'm letting you know the question is sensitive to them. Mm. They want to borrow money. They want to ask you if they, if they think they should fire this employee that they have. It's a sensitive question. Or like, or like just when say, someone says, I work 20 bucks? Yeah, or like when someone says, with all due respect. All, you know, all, some, all unnecessary, with all due respect. That's going to, you work. know what, something's coming, right? You know something's coming. So right here, just to let you know, I'm not the kind of person who would cheat on you. I could throw away, just to let you know, I'm not the kind of person who can cheat on you. I can't right. pull the word not out and throw it away. Right. The word not is, well, bam, right in the middle of that sentence. Right. I can't remove it. So I would be more concerned about person A than person B. Right. You, are you following me? I got it. So my kids, if my kids say, mom, I know you think I took money from your wallet, but it wasn't me. I go, mm, I didn't think that until now. And now I think it was you, Charlie. <laughs> right. 
Because Maya Angelou, the great poet, said, people tell us and show us who they are. It's about time we start paying attention. Yeah. In statement analysis, we believe the truth is inside the statements if you know how to pull apart the statement and how to analyze it. That's so, awesome. So why do I say that? I say that because I'm going to play it again, what Karen Reed said here, right? Hmm. Let's go back. Let's go back. Stand by. Oh, we have to, yeah. Uh, did it come you're, off? You're looking at the um, comments, too, here for a second. Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. Listen, what does Karen Reed tell us? Listen, now you're learning about statement analysis. Oh. They were saying you were intoxicated. Here we go. Listen. When you walked out of the bar, how many drinks had you had? I had had probably about four. The Commonwealth says that you had nine drinks that night. That's what the prosecution says. I, I don't believe they're saying I wasn't in. I don't believe they're saying. Let's take that away. I don't believe they're saying. Now let's hear what she says. We're throwing away that first part. I wasn't in my right mind. I oh, they were saying you were. I wasn't in my right mind. 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 I oh, you're saying you were intoxicated. All right. So again, so now we've got a third big hot spot here with with her on the alcohol. And I know I'm spending a lot of time here because this is the only place that I think that she's being not forthright and I think she's lying to us. Um she also I want to write down I I put something down here I wanted to share with us. Um <laughs> Okay, where is it? Um, okay. Hold on a second. All right. Um, when someone, she squints her eyes here, and when someone squints her eye, when we all squint our eyes, everyone try it. Like I would say, you can't unhear, unsee, and experience what you learn. So everyone squint your eyes and go like this. This is, there's an issue here, a concern, a dislike. She doesn't like, them. she doesn't want to talk about this stuff. Right? No. And so we see those eyes squinting here. We do not see that at other parts of the story. We don't even see it when the, our eyes aren't squinting when she talks about dropping off John. No. Uh, with all this being said, I still believe her. I believe Karen Reed did not kill Brian O'Keefe. I do believe she's being set up. I believe she's being framed by law enforcement mm. and potentially the um, the um, lawyer, um, the law office there, the, the prosecuting attorney. The attorney's office. Yeah. The attorney's office. Thank you. Um, mm. We always want a baseline when decoding um, words. Now let's look at these squishy words from Amber Heard. I put together a montage. For you, Sean, for your show, and then I threw it in my newsletter, but I created this yesterday because I knew you were going to have me on. Oh, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to, I was at first, I was going to do a PowerPoint. I'm like, I'll just bring on my whole newsletter. This is beautiful. People can, and be, again, people can download this for free. It's called Substack. Mm -hmm. And my newsletter is called In the Driver's Seat. You can see it there at the top. You just go to Substack. It's it's an app, or you can go online, substack.com. Totally free. Uh, you can pay for additional stuff if you want to do lives like this with me and, sure. and my team of experts. That's seven bucks you pay a month. Um, so if nice. people want to do that, you can. I, I think I only have like 40, 50 people on doing that. It, it'll eventually grow. I just started doing it two months ago. Wow. Uh, Let's watch what squishy language sounds like with Amber Heard found guilty of lying uh, when she tried suing Johnny Depp, her ex-husband, uh, how she uses all these squishy words. All right, listen to this. I'm going to kind of get into a, 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 how do you describe it? Um, pushing each other, you know? Uh, I don't really recall um, specifics. I, I I remember at one point um, he had his uncasted hand in my hair, and I was looking at the carpet. I don't know. I don't know what happened immediately after that, but I remember he left. He was out of the room. And that apartment was empty basically, and so the, the the I used it the top bedrooms the the bedrooms on the top floor as my closet. When I first walked into the room, and he kind of stood up was drinking a um, Red Bull and screaming at me. And he threw the Red Bull can up at me, certainly, but it kind of either hit or narrowly missed Debbie. Um, and hand on the back of my, my head, my hair, and kind of was yanking me down and um, hit me in the face with this cast he had. Um, I just remember this this brief struggle we had before kind of break away Whitney, my sister, 
Johnny kind of looked stunned and then laughed at me. My chest was on this. My back was on the countertop. And she's an actress. Yeah, it's and almost I, done. It's almost done. Yeah, she's a girl. He was punching me. I thought he was. He's either punching you or he's not. What do you mean you thought he was punching you? He thought he was punching me. Oh, fake. It looked like he was. Now it looked like he was punching you. It was like. He was kind of hitting me. It didn't feel pain. And as I get up, he kind of kicks the swivel chair into my hip, or kind of just hits me. I fell to the floor. I caught myself on the floor, and I just felt like I was looking at the mm. floor of the plane for a, felt like a long time. And I, I, didn't, I, I thought to myself, I don't know what to do. All right. I like, if you're taking notes, which I have a funny feeling some people might be taking notes. Mm -hmm. If you're taking notes, what I like to say, Sean, and, and you at home is when there's a like or a kinda, there's more to find her. <laughs> so when there's a like or a kinda, there's more to find her. Mm. All right. She's loaded with it. She's loaded right. with it. Where do we see it with Karen Reed? What bam? Just about the alcohol, not about the most important part, which is when John O'Keefe is dropped off at that point. Exactly. That's, All right. That's awesome. Tomorrow, I write about the many faces of Karen Reed, her eye movements, and her, <clears throat> her body language. Wow. Uh, this is where you pointed this out, Sean. I'm going to show it to you because I pulled it, and it's a quiz for people in the newsletter. Uh, can you guess when Karen Reed pulled her legs in? And now you know it's when she was talking about the alcohol. I love that you picked up on it. Yeah. And if you had time to like rewind, you would really see it. So what I did here is I loop it for us. Watch this. Oh, wow. Okay. Watch oh, this. See her right leg. Oh, yeah. It does go back. Under the chair. So you see that her hands are here. Watch that right leg is coming up under the chair. Right. And when does this happen? Right after she's being challenged. This is where right. they, he says, hey, the bar says you had eight or whatever, eight or nine drinks. So and is that like, is that like the same thing when a person is asking a question and they start looking at the door? unconscious like they want to they want to get out of this position right like did she put her right leg back to like you know subconsciously try to get out so of the position consciously becoming a smaller target so let's look yeah. at we'll talk briefly about you talking about looking at the door so i teach a class in law enforcement called pre-assault indicators and you've probably taken classes on pre-assault indicators anyway but yes. there's some different pre-assault indicators and one is someone blading their body towards the door um right. and another one is like looking around um and there's different videos you can see of people doing this you can see the attack happening looking around mm -hmm. blading their body um another one is a clap which sounds crazy uh mm -hmm. and it's funny because when i say this to state police they go janine this happens all the time they'll pull someone over on the side of the road they if they have them get out of the car they might be dancing or being goofy or whatever and then they clap and as soon as they clap they either try to grab a gun out of the truck or the right. car or they run so I say, when there's a clap, we're ready to act. If you think of like Jay Leno back in the day or Johnny Carson, or you think of uh, uh, Jimmy, the Jimmies, Jimmy Fallon and, and uh, Jimmy Kimmel, they'll do their monologue and then they clap. You think of a football coach or a basketball coach. They, they clap, clap. When there's sure. a clap, we're ready to act. And so right. in, a, in a situation in law enforcement, if you're talking to someone and the stress is high and, and they're a potential suspect or criminal, and there's a clap, you're now in, that's a danger. That's an action sign. That's an action yeah. sign. So when you is know what the guy in Texas fail? said? What? The guy in Texas? Yeah. He says, down in Texas, someone takes a hat off, you're in for a rip whipping. I really? See that action? Take so the hat off. When there's yeah. a clap, if, if you're in sales and someone says, now tell me about your product, Janine. Right. Tell me about the keynote presentations you do. <clears throat> if I don't sell that person, shame on me because that person's ready to buy. Right. Because when there's a clap, we're ready to act. If, if hmm. you're, you own a diamond store and someone goes in and says, I'm thinking of proposing to my girlfriend, sure. you better sell that guy or that woman a diamond because they're ready. They're going to buy it from somebody, if not you. Wow. Uh, what else? I mean, there's so much I could, well, I could uh, talk about. But. Hey, guys, you want to start asking some questions? I'll pick them up. Uh, what about this one here, uh, Jenny? This question right in the Every time Molly uh, presents his testimony, his ears and face is so bright. Is it a sign of lying? Uh, I need to get the baseline. So everybody's different. As a matter of fact, research shows that if your face turns red, 
you are more um, you are more likable in a customer service role. So if I come in and I'm going to whatever Kohl's, Macy's, Nordstrom's, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm mad about something and you weren't run that store, send the person who gets super red, send them out to deal with the problem because what happens is we feel bad for them and then we begin to calm down. Hmm. So I don't know. I have not watched that with, with Lally. I've not, right. I've not done that. So I'm okay. just in on this case in the last couple of days. Okay. Um, let's say I'm not seeing many here. Uh, keep going. Someone says, keep going, Janice. Thanks, Janice. My 11 year old no, this has been is great. Amber supporter. Mm. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, your 11 year old will, will figure it out when, when he or she gets older. Uh, let's see. Question. Can you review the tape where KR is talking about them being happy and normal? Happy, hmm. and normal. All right. Let me see. Let me go back in there. Hang on a second. All right. Happy and normal. Where was that? I think that's. No. Nope. Happy and normal. Yeah, I didn't see that either. Here it is. Here it is. Oh, let me get it up. I'll get it up there. Oh. You see it? Is it no. up there, Fred? It's up. It's up in the screen. Yeah. Okay. It's up. I think. All right, hang on a second. Let me look at it. Uh, just very. By the way, she looks exhausted here. I'm sure yeah. she is exhausted. I don't know yeah. when there's the day. She looks so tired here. Yeah. Uh, let's look at. Let me like, analyze it. Hold on. We were. All right. So you see her shaking the head no there, but keep in mind those head shakes. I mentioned it earlier. If you were not here, the head shaking yes and no. I throw those out because. Sometimes that's connected with internal dialogue. We always have two conversations happening. The one that I'm listening to you on and the one I'm having in my head. Some of you are like, yeah, I, have, I know people who talk like that in their head, but I don't do that. Yeah, that's the voice I'm talking about that just said that to you. The mm -hmm. voice inside your head that says, yeah, I don't do that. That's the voice. And right. so sometimes our head is shaking. Like right here, she, she she's saying they had a happy relationship and she's shaking her head no, but she could be thinking like, I can't believe it's over. Like, I can't believe he's gone, you know? So we don't know what the catalyst is. So I, that's not a good one on detecting deception. Sadness. Yeah. By the way, most people don't feel like there is sadness with her. She's so strong and strong. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we'll have to talk about it another time with her um, her movements and how it connects to. She's what I think is called high determining. And mm -hmm. high determining people are stubborn. They persist against difficult odds. When the going gets tough, they get tougher. And if you increase mm -hmm. pressure on them, they will increase pressure on you. They will not back down. I mean, her even doing those interviews, her lawyer could have been saying, listen, don't do all these interviews, right? I mean, think about it with Turtle Boy. I don't know much about the Turtle Boy situation, but from what I understand, the brief amount, I looked into that for like five seconds today, is she was evidently talking to him or giving him information. Um, I, that fits with her movement DNA, which is when when you're, the state is increasing pressure on her, she'll increase pressure back. Now, some people might say, you know, that's interfering with the investigation and maybe it is. However, maybe getting Turtle Boy in is why the FBI and the, the Department of State, uh, uh, Justice Department started investigating. Maybe exactly. Turtle Boy sharing all that information, I believe as a swearing Christian, I believe everything's happening for my greater good. And if she takes a bullet for um, sharing information, compromising an investigation, she'd much rather that than go to jail for killing a boyfriend that she loved and cared about that she didn't kill. Absolutely. So, and there was no gag on her. She could have talked to anybody she wanted. Well, there's no gag on her. There you go. Right? We were, yeah, so let's see. We were happy. So she's shaking the head, but that means nothing. Sadness. Whoa, bam. This is sadness. Now, I don't think she's lying here. Uh, this sad, the reason I don't think she's lying is we have what are called pacifiers. A pacifier is when a piece of our body touches another piece of our body. And mm. when we lie, we will often do high level pacifiers. We'll touch our head. Men tend to pat the back of their head. Women will go to the back of their neck, the nape of their neck here and lift their hair up. Um, we see no pacifiers here. We see sadness. She's looking to her left, which is her baseline, which is mm -hmm. recalling information. Um, let's see what else happens here. Happy, having fun, laughing. 
happy, having fun, laughing. By the way, if you see the clip that's out there of them in the bar that night, she snuggled up to him. She's got his, her arm around him. It looks like they're having a ball. Exactly. All right, let's see. So, laughing, happy, having fun, laughing. Uh, we were happy, having fun, laughing. She uses we. So we is um, a team. We is a, uh, we're, we're, we're together on this. Um, she could have just dropped the pronoun there. So she didn't, she used we. Um, we implies a team. I'll give you, let's play another game. You wanna play a game with me, Sean? Sure. When you at home? Here's another game. Um, how did the police know this person was lying? Okay, here we go, here's the game. How did the police know this person was lying? That's a true story. <clears throat> okay. All right, um, a girl goes to the police department and she says that she's raped says she's raped and here's her statement how did the police know she's lying she said um he uh a man approached he um threw me in uh he threw me in his car we drove to the woods he raped me and then threw me out of the car so he threw me this guy came he he threw me in his car he we drove to the woods he raped me and threw me out of the car how did the cops know? She she knew him. She knew him. Yeah. How did she know? How did, how did the cops know? What do you think? Do you know? It's yeah, hard I, when it's not written down. Yeah. I right. Can't, yeah, I can't, we. Yeah. We. Oh, we. We. No person on earth that's ever been raped no. will say a we, we with an attacker. We implies a relationship. So no one ever raped, ever mugged, will ever say, then we went to the bank and then we went to the ATM and, and he had me take out the money. And then we went into my bedroom. No, it's he forced me to the bank. He drove me to the grocery store. He right. dragged me upstairs. He, it's never a we. We implies a relationship. So we have we right here. Um, mm -hmm. She could have separated the we and she could have said John and I, or she could have said, uh, me and John, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So me and John, we were very happy, but she doesn't. She says we, which implies a team and a relationship. She doesn't separate right. it. All right. Let me see if there's anything else. Like, uh, just very happy, having fun, laughing. Happy, having fun, laughing. Uh, just very. So here she squints her eyes on laughing. So you see that, and that squinting the eye thing is that deep. That's that that regret that um, there's something wrong here, right? And that mm -hmm. makes sense here because she's like, it's gone, right? It's gone. So here, let's see. Happy, having fun, laughing. Uh, just very laughing. Um, her eyebrows coming down in that furrowed look. That eyebrows mm -hmm. coming down is concern, deep concern. So the mm -hmm. forefront, because it's so close to our brain, is very valuable place to look for information. Fun, laughing. Uh, just very normal. Did you ever feel you were overserved that night? As no, I no. All right. Mm. So I, I don't know if I answered the person's question that wanted me to go back over there, but okay. hopefully Good. I did. And um, I have a question here from yeah. Joe, Joey just saying. Yeah. To me, someone saying she looks like she's reminiscing. Can you please How about the question on the screen? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me see. Are you used to seeing high profile lawyers allow a client multiple national TV interviews in a murder defense? Well, you know, it's interesting because we see it a lot and we see it usually when the person's guilty because they want to overly convince us, right? Who do right. we see it with? Scott Peterson did it. He, he mm -hmm. was later found guilty on circuit, only case found guilty, murder, death sentence, circumstantial evidence, because then, you know, they never mm -hmm. connected him directly to it. But Scott Peterson killed his pregnant wife uh, and their unborn son, Connor. Right. Uh, he couldn't do enough TV interviews. Also a bad actor. Mm -hmm. And uh, who else? Scott Peterson. I mean, Drew Peterson. Drew Peterson killed his uh, wife, Lacey Peterson. So we right. have a her. He's in jail for killing his second or third wife, Kathleen Salvio. Right. And um, she died in a dry bathtub and he was a local cop and he came and he was the first person on the scene. And uh, they exhumed her body after his fourth wife, Stacy, went missing. They they dug up, uh, exhumed her, um, uh, her the, the wife who passed earlier's body, Kathleen Savio, and he was found guilty of killing her. As a matter of fact, when he was on the Today Show, Scott, um, what's his name, um, Matt Lauer, mm -hmm. asked him, 
a question something like this uh, to Drew Peterson. Uh, if you're, and Drew Peterson's lawyer was sitting right next to him. Mm. If, if you, uh, if, if when they do this um, investigation and they, they bring up your wife's body and they determine it was murder, how do you feel about that? Do you know what he said, Drew Peterson? He said, well, if I go to jail financially, my kids are taken care of. I think Matt Lauer's looking around like, dude, I, where's the FBI? I just got a confession. Yeah. This is where's, a the lawyer? where's the lawyer? <laughs> the question was, what do you think if she's if, if she's found that there was foul play and she was actually murdered? And then he responds, well, if I'm found guilty of murder, he's saying he's the one that did it. Why yeah. didn't he jump there? He could have just yeah. said what? Well, if they found out she was murdered, then then I'm going to be the first person investigating who did it. Right. I want whoever did it to be punished to the fullest extent of the law. That's yeah, a great question was, to ask people. He was a know. nut. He was if definitely a nut. Did, yeah, who else? A ton of people um, do do and Chris Watts, but Chris Watts didn't do those interviews on purpose. Chris Watts found guilty of killing his pregnant wife, Shanann, and his two young daughters, Celeste and Bella. And he did not choose to do those, but um, Shanann, the pregnant wife, her best friend is a woman named Nicole, and Shanann had written to Nicole a text message, Chris doesn't want the baby. Mm. And he was very fussy recently, and they were fighting a lot. And she didn't show up for work, Nicole. And, I mean, not Nicole, um, Shanann. And Nicole, the best friend, not only called police, but called all the local media and said, hey, pregnant wife and two young kids missing, Chris Watts coming home, come and interview him. That was That's the kind of best friend that I want. So her best mm. friend, called the media. He didn't choose. He didn't set up those interviews, Chris Watts. They, they right. landed right there. So we have another question at the bottom of the screen there. Michael Morris is the district attorney, gave a pre-recorded statement back in the summertime, early September. Uh, I've not seen it, but if, 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 if you have it, Sean, or someone can send it to me, sure, um, I will. I'm happy to come back on and, sure. and, and anything, just, not just that, if, if, if you want me to bring the 911 call, anything, Sure. Send it to me. I'm new on it and I'd love to um, talk about it as the case continues to go on. I know we have a couple of weeks. Any insight on our lawyers when they speak? I see confidence. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely confidence. What's her lawyer's name? What's his name? Um, Alan Jackson and Davey and Andy. Yeah, so Alan Jackson. Uh, and by the way, I'm sending my newsletters over to someone I know that knows Alan Jackson. So mm. my newsletter and what we... Um, we, we addressed in the newsletter. I don't know if they'll end up seeing this. Maybe, who knows? Maybe Karen Reed's watching us right now. If she I, is, I'm praying for you, Karen, because I can only imagine, going, imagine you, your family going to hell and back. It's right. just, everything happens for a greater good, though, and it'll turn around. It will turn around. Yeah. Here's another one at the bottom from Filthy Rat Bastard. <laughs> All right. Let me see. Question Would you come on sometime in the future and go over court footage? Lally versus Jackson, body language. Yeah. Uh, who's Lally yeah. versus Jackson? Do you know? Lally's the uh, DA and Jackson's the process. Uh, the, he's the defense attorney. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'd be more than happy to do that. Uh, I sometimes speak to the association for lawyers and mm -hmm. they do a case <clears throat> and it's like, it's a, it was based on a real case where uh, someone dies on a, on a amusement park ride. And mm -hmm. half the lawyers are put on the defense side and half are on the prosecuting side. And they're te teaching them how to prepare for trials. They, they were going to be becoming trial lawyers. And I go in and spy on their body language as they're presenting their cases. And then I take pictures mm -hmm. of videos and then show them. And because of that, I know a lot about, I'm not a lawyer or a psychologist, but I know a lot about it because I, I do some research and, um, and apply it. And what I right. found out is if a jury likes the lawyer, then that helps the plaintiff or whoever the lawyer is representing. That will sure. help the state or it'll help the city. Or So the, the importance of likability for the lawyer is so important. I mean, if you think about Johnny Depp's lawyers, oh, so incredible, likable, right. charming, likable friend. They became celebrities. So being likable is important. Um, sure. And yes. body language, you know, I had said that uh, Karen Reed can be a little snarky and she was uh, sarcastic at one point. And this is in mm -hmm. the interview. I did not pull it. Maybe I'll put it in tomorrow's newsletter mm -hmm. that I'm creating. I, I fly tomorrow to South Carolina for an event, but I'll, I'm going to work on it at the airport. Sure. Is when she's asked by one of the one of the news people, I forget which channel. It might be ABC, but she's asked. Oh no, I think it's ABC. I mean NBC. But she's asked. Um, the firefighters that were there said that you said I killed him, and she said, "I said I killed him," and that was preceded. By a did and proceeded 
by a question mark. Mm. Karen, if you're watching, zip the sarcasm, right? Because mm. that Boston moxie might work in a social situation or, or with friends that will not serve her well in the public eye. Because right. here's the deep, even if she's found, even if they drop the case, which I think they will for her, and yeah. she sues the state of Massachusetts for millions and millions <clears> of dollars, there's still going to be a, a large group out there that thinks she got away with murder. And so right. she, it, it, that is not going to serve her well. Your right. job is to have emotional intelligence in these moments, to act. And it sucks, Karen, because you're answering the same frigging question a thousand frigging times. I can only imagine what that's like. You need to, my advice, girl to girl, is you need to, Karen, act as if it's the first time you're being asked this. Act mm -hmm. as if the person who is watching knows nothing about your case, doesn't know that you've been, you're trapped in your apartment, you lost your jobs, like you're probably right now reading 1,000, 3,000 plus pages from from the federal government. Right. We're not in your shoes. You know, <laughs> I, I have live in no pairs because I travel for work as a, as a motivational and keynote speaker, right? So I have a live in au pair. I travel 50 to 100 times around the world speaking. And they're always from different countries. My au pair right now is, is from Italy. Okay. One of the things I interviewed an au pair and I hired her, she was from Aust um, Austria. Is She was like a Chuck E. Cheese character in um, a, like a Chuck E. Cheese thing in Austria. And mm -hmm. I asked her, what's that like? She goes, well, I'll tell you. On weekends, I'm doing 25 birthday parties. And she said to me, and I'll never forget it. It's the reason I hired her and, and had her become part of my family. And I love cultural exchange and diversity. Is she said to me, the very first party, that kid, I go crazy. It's the first party. It's the, I'm excited. And that 28th kid needs that same enthusiasm from me. Mm. Because I know that I did 27 other parties. So my advice to Karen, if she happens to be listening, is I, I it must suck to be asked this question over and over and over again. Have humility, have grace and act like this person is just doing their job and they just want to get the truth out. And, and there's a set of people that don't know anything about you and they're going to judge you based on your comments and sarcasm. I just wrote an article last week, a newsletter on sarcasm, but you know, Boston girl, myself from Waltham, Massachusetts, it does not serve us well in our personal and professional relationships. Right. Don Marie says Karen's physical appearance now compared to previous court appearances, very confident. You probably haven't seen her. No, I have. I've. I've. I haven't seen that much. Yeah. Just, well, I can tell you right now. Yeah. Like compared to those interviews that you saw and the earlier court appearances yes. to now, night and day, she is so confident, so uh, energetic, happy. Okay. She yeah. Doesn't... So I have seen some of those. Court TV's given me a couple mm -hmm. pieces of those. I, I'll analyze in the in the her body language tomorrow in the newsletter about sure. that. Uh, yeah. Um, her head is held up higher right now, um, which can be perceived as a sign of arrogance. But this is what I'm saying, that she knows that this is not She knows she's not going to jail for this. No. She knows the federal the FBI is involved. She knows heads are going to roll and it's not going to be hers. So That's exactly what I say. Yeah. Knowing she, you know, I don't know. Uh, my, my au pair right now is from Italy, uh, Frankie, and she watches what are the, the race car drivers in, in Europe? The, the, the little race cars. What do they call it? Um, Formula One. Formula One. Formula One racing. If you watch Formula One racing, there's the same team that wins every single time. If you watch it, everybody knows. What is it? Red Italians? Bull. Italians? Red Bull. Nope. Oh, so Red, Red Bull. Bull is winning everything. Red Bull comes in first and second. Red Bull first and second. These other teams, Mercedes, Ferrari, they, their goal is just to come in third or fourth. Right. That's, how, that's how confident Red Bull is. So if you right. are walking around with Red Bull swag, you have your chin up, you are casual, you are <laughs> Right. Karen Reed is walking around with virtual Red Bull swag all over her because she already right. knows. She knows. Right. But she's not going to jail for this. And it looks like this is the last question of the night, Janice. All right. I don't even know what this time from, it is. This is from this LJ. Is old, everybody. Nine right. o'clock. Can you please analyze that? That's two full hours. Statement. Why does Judge Bev sigh? All right. right. What was the statement? What was the statement? Do you know? Uh, well, I think it was more. Um, Morrissey statement. That's the, the famous tape statement where they're being crucified. A judge, I mean, a district attorney never comes out and comments pre-trial. It was an extrajudicial statement by the government, right? And this yes. judge, she, if 
it's almost like when she sighs, like she's you're asking to move the earth. She yeah. goes, ah, you know, it's just like, don't bother me. That type okay. of thing. Did they not ask the judge to step down? They asked her to, to recuse, get a recuse from the case. Yeah. She okay. said, no way. I'm not leaving. I'm going to be Judge Alito. <laughs> yes. So let me ask you this, uh, Sean. Maybe you know this. I heard, I don't know if this is true, that I think it was her father, that her father was a lawyer or a judge and helped um, someone, helped the Albert family. Right. I believe like it was her brother. Murder mm -hmm. on, like there was some type of accident on a highway, someone died. Yeah. Like This judge's relative, I think it was the father, helped yeah. the Albert family at one point. Right. Right. So I think it's, I think it's the brother. I'm not sure. It was either a father and the brother. Um, I'll have to check that out. But yeah, Chris Albert, Chris Albert is the brother, current select board member of the town that this happened in. And the, the third party culprit suspect is Brian Albert. Yeah, so, I just heard not her sister, her brother was the lawyer. Too. Right. Was it right. Albert? Is that who it was? So her the that, judge's brother represented uh one of the brothers that's involved in this case. And he was a vehicle homicide back 20 years ago. He fled the scene of the accident with his car, came back, I don't know, 20 hours later, and he served six months for killing that person. So <clears throat> So you get the OUI, there was yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting the calls from people who are watching. Um, all right. So sometimes, the, what was the question here? This is sigh? So can you please? So yeah, the so the judge, yeah. she sighs all the time. Huh? You know. That's also not good. Uh, so sighing could be things like, it could be different things. It could be boredom. It could be contempt. Yeah. Um, even without, you know, words, sign communicates emotions to others, um, discuss, it can be an emotional release signing. Sure. Uh, and, on and here's journey. another thing, uh, Janine, <clears throat> she's very against the LA side of the defense. Like for instance, um, one of the female attorneys, it was just a quick question. The judge off the bench goes here in Massachusetts, we stand for questions. It was kind of a, a little slap, a little dig, because okay. <clears throat> it was just one of these, uh, Your Honor, and she was, uh, here in Massachusetts, we stand. Yeah, so ego. So. Um, frustration, <laughs> uh, it, it's, an, it's a negative side. It's very disrespectful. However, let's do a little sidebar for parenting. For the parents. Sure. Okay. Beautiful. If your kids sigh when you ask them to do something and you punish them because you say, hey, you're being disrespectful. Go up to your room. I'm letting you know a little tidbit here, okay? For parents out here. Kids are learning to sigh because we sigh when we are irritated. We're returning something at a store, right? And there's a long line. <sighs> you get groceries delivered from, from Instacart or whatever, and the, the milk expires in three days. You take it out, you see the expiration date, you go, <sighs> Kids learn from us that sighing is a way that we express discomfort and when we're not happy or when we're angry. And here's the catch too. When our kids then sigh because we punish them or we say, hey, you got to do your homework for dinner before dinner. And they go, ah, and they roll their eyes. If you punish them, that's coming from your ego. You're, that's not a good parenting skill because yeah. what you need to do is you need to be focusing on the big problems. You say to your kids, oh, we don't we don't say F-bombs. We don't swear. We don't tell our parents to go blank themselves. We don't talk about that language. And eliminate the word respect from your vocabulary because no one really knows what that is. What is respect? Stop saying you're going to be respectful. You should give an example of what respect is. In our house, we do this. We talk to people like this. Uh, this is a big thing uh, with, with life coaching. I took this really cool life coaching program, and it blew my mind a couple of years ago. Because my kids would roll their eyes and sigh. And I'd be like, hey, manners make the man. We don't roll our eyes. And then in the coaching class, this guy said, it blew my mind. He's like, where do you think they learn it? Adults mm. do it when we're frustrated. So if your kids are sure. sighing or teenagers sighing and rolling their eyes, that's just your ego getting offended by it. Let them express their emotion. You know, as long as they're not swearing at you and breaking stuff, doing drugs, whatever. Right. 
Um, so Janine, what do you think? Final thoughts. Final thoughts and maybe. Final thoughts. Uh, I, I, my hope is that justice is prevails. Right. My hope is that John O'Keefe um, gets that justice that he deserves. Exactly. My concern is because the Albert family is so connected, hmm. it depends on how connected they are. Right. On can they can they somehow connect to the Justice Department? Can they somehow connect to someone in the FBI who knows a secret for someone else and, and do another favor and he gets a little slap on the hand because they, they can't prove it? I don't understand for the life of me, Sean, and you at home, how you can get that many people, including young people, in that house and that the truth isn't going to come out. This right. day and age, you know, I think hashtag me too, when that whole thing like started coming out, like no one was safe. No one, no one is safe now. What used to happen behind closed doors that everyone's about transparency. And I'll tell you a little secret about the state of Massachusetts. The state of Massachusetts is trying their best to do law enforcement reform. And they just got a huge black eye on the state by this, especially because there's a state, 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 state trooper involved, exactly. state police officer. So they got a huge black eye. I, I would not be surprised the way that Martha Stewart was made an example of, right, for insider training. That was to, to sure. show someone an example. I wouldn't be surprised if the state of Massachusetts and the people involved, what I believe is John O'Keefe, because why didn't he come out, see a dead body, another fellow police officer from the Boston, yeah. even if they didn't know each other. Um, right. I, I, uh, I have a sister that said, hey, don't get involved in this case. It's really divided. You know what? At the end of the day, I'm all about seeking the truth. And, and sure. I'm not a perfect person. And uh, none of us are perfect. I think we do the best we can. I've made dumb decisions throughout my life, made poor choices. I still make dumb choices. I tell my kids all the time, we're human beings. We make stupid choices. Uh, a mentor of mine, Jim Cavanaugh, who was a hostage negotiator with ATF and got the women and children out of Waco, Texas, before the FBI mm -hmm. took over. Jim Cavanaugh is his name. And he said to me a long time ago, Janine, everyone makes mistakes. Just don't make the same mistake twice. And that's my yeah. call. So hopefully my hope for Karen Reed is that either A, she quits drinking, if she is a big drinker, I don't know if she is, and that she certainly never drinks and drives again. She may lose her driver's license uh, if she ends up going to jail for that. Um, mm -hmm. And that we all learn, don't take those shortcuts because very easily she could have been the one that backed over John. She could have wrapped her, her car, that big giant car around a telephone pole. She could have hit another Smart. car with a guy coming home from work, from a late job, completely sober, working his ass off, two jobs, single father, and she could have killed him. So right. don't get behind the wheel. It's stupid this day and age with Uber and all that stuff. So that's that's my big call to action is <clears throat> uh, I hope Justin, justice prevails. I hope the people that are involved are held accountable. And I hope heads roll. And and I hope that Karen Reed makes a shit ton of money. <laughs> and with that money, does something on John's behalf, which I'm sure she will. And um and maybe even helps people. Maybe she creates some type of uh, a way to help people, a company who are being falsely accused of a crime uh, because of negligence with an investigation with law enforcement. You're the first right. person to talk about it, Sean, that I know of about how the protocol was not done right. I mean, they didn't even go Never. inside the house. I mean, this is one thing after another here. Never. I mean, what are your it's alarming. About? It's alarming. What's Janine, your I, from the bottom of my heart, I really want to thank you for taking the time. You're flying yeah. out tomorrow. Come on. You yeah. took the time out to be here with us a full two and a half, um, two hours, 15 minutes. Really? And I know. I got to go watch my What's and your big takeaway from the night, John? My big takeaway from the night, I've learned a lot. What I learned was, um, and I was kind of kind of already on this picture, right? But yeah, I, I really believe what she's being charged with, she stood firmly on her ground, right? The other part is, you know, it's it's not, listen. I haven't drank in five years. It's not easy to be accused of, you know, being a drinker. It's kind of the stuff you want to just kind of brush off and, you know. But the thing that 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 amazes me is that she was so uh, adamant. She was positive. She just, I saw John. I saw this. I saw that. Only one trying to save him. Right. I'm the only one to save him. Listen, I, I make no bones about this. 
if I thought that she killed him, I would be I'd be the first one way because yeah. you know, it's not easy to spend 35 years on the prosecutor's side and then all of a sudden you're defending a person who's been charged with killing a person that I worked with in the, the, the business for 35 years. I believe in her. I believe in her innocence. And I know this corruption. This is why we, we, this is why I believe uh, established this platform. Flaw and order, the mass corruption unit, not the special victims unit. This is mass corrupt. We're going to take this wherever it leads us. Love and that's what I, that's what I, that's what I, I, love I believe. That you're, you're on a journey for truth. And I think that's great. You know, my job is always to inspire people. My life's mission is to inspire people to look at their oh, world. Yeah. You're, right. you're absolutely, I mean, when I first spoke to you, I said, I know I'm going to have a connection with Janine. It was awesome. Awesome, Janine. I'm so happy that we got to do this on our third our third show in five days. It's amazing. And I don't I know, know how you do it. Family, I can't thank I know you the enough. the family appreciates this. Uh, I know my, my followers here, the people on the platform, the moderators that we work with have another Facebook page. Just really appreciate your time, Janine. Oh, my God. Really thank do. you so much. If you know, check out my newsletter. It's it's totally oh, yeah. free over back in the driver's seat. Uh, my website is janinedriver.com. If if you're love connected it. to a company, one of the ways you can help me is we love referrals. Uh, my company is the Body Language Institute, and if you know they're bringing in keynote speakers or a motivational speaker, uh, please think of me. Uh, I don't swear at those events. Uh, <laughs> I keep it clean, and uh, I have. I think it's 16 different topics we talk on from sales to business. And if I can help, and if I can help anyone personally as a friend, please let me know, reach out. My website is my name, janinedriver.com, and you can connect That's with beautiful. me there. Uh, I'm not a big social media person, although I'm going to start firing up my TikToks again. People seem to like my TikToks. I've done a bunch when I was on the, uh, with the Johnny Depp trial. I was in the courtroom a couple of times for that and weighed in on that pretty heavily. So I will Good. be putting information about this, about Karen and everybody involved over on my TikTok channel, which is Body Language Institute. And um, stay connected with me. And We will definitely keep in touch with you, Janine. I'll Thank you. And I'm you. a fair person. So God bless you, Sean, and your wife. Thank and you. your kids. And if she has kids, and God bless everybody here. Uh, say yep. safe, make smart decisions. You know, today, let it be a wake-up call. Sometimes we need to Ooh. hear something. Seven times, I think it is, that they say before we make a change. So if you right. happen to drink and drive ever, uh, right. this story for Karen is is crazy. And she's going to Helen back. And thank right. God she wasn't the one that killed her boyfriend. Absolutely. Thank God she didn't do it. Absolutely. Make smart decisions. Be safe, everybody. Thanks, Sean. I appreciate thank it. Janine, Bye, thank you. Too. We'll be thank in touch. You. And safe travels. Safe travels, Janine. We'll thank be in you. touch. Thank you. Well, how about that? Three shows in, we, we we score an incredible guest. Listen, um, if you liked what we had tonight, put a little comment for the replay people. Give me some suggestions. What you didn't like, you liked. Uh, I think we're doing an incredible job. I see someone said we had 1,400 people here. This is amazing. Um, I'm very grateful for the platform we're, we're um, creating here. Uh, we're not going to be done. We're And we know this is going to – listen – a week from tomorrow is D-Day. I just hope they don't change it again. But a week from tomorrow, all right, is the time we're going to figure out what's where we're going this. But this platform's staying. I've got people lined up with their corruption stories. One guy is living, is living in corruption hell right now. It's not ending for him. So uh, with that said, I appreciate everyone here tonight. Thank you for supporting uh, me and my team and the whole people. It's all about you guys, all about everyone. So, again, have a great night. Hug everyone you love. You got to hug them because, they, like Dave McGrath said, you know, he his father died and he missed messages. <clears throat> he missed messages to his poor dad. Take the time out to hug the person you love. Don't be afraid to pick up the phone. You're fighting with your family. Get back with them. Get back with them. With that, listen, we're moving forward. I'll see you pretty soon in the pages. I'll be putting out some more um, streams. i to figure out a few things. i got guys that want to come on. So just, um, oh, listen, I'll be on with Brian LTL Thursday night. And then, again, the week after, I'll be with Dylan in Wales. And we're going to be doing the play-by-play, -play, I say, for the Karen Reed uh, 
massacre. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it the massacre. It's gonna be an awesome, awesome time, exciting time, as a matter of fact. Everyone, I love you all. Thank you. Come back soon.